test test one Off here for the Lions is number 17, Tyler Cullen swings and hits a deep fly ball to left field, and that ball's off the net. First pitch swing at number 17, Tyler Cullen there with a leadoff home run there for the Lions there in the bottom of the first there. Way to get it started there. That'll be TC's second home run on the season. So much for being patient there at the plate. First pitch swinging. Nice job, TC, coming after a good game against uh, Lindsey Wilson yesterday where the Lions were victorious 10-6. to six. Now coming to the plate is the third baseman, number 44, Bryson Lawson. He's coming off a four for six day yesterday against Lindsey Wilson. Basin got a little lefty on lefty matchup here. Here's wide and pitch to the slider, hit back up the middle for a base hit. That's gonna be two pitches, two hits there for the Lions back to back there. TC with the lead off home run. And then Bryson Lawson reaches the single up the middle. And coming to the plate is going to be our right fielder, number 11, Darwin Gregg, who's the uh, tie for the team lead in home runs with eight. Pitcher looks in and gives the sign. Takes the loss from the runner at first. Here's the pitch. It is swing and fouled off to the right side. Pitcher getting ahead in the count 0-1. Looks sign, takes the sign, comes set, checks lost in there at first. Here's the line of the pitch. Gonna be a fastball goes by the catcher. Lawson's gonna move up to second there. That brings it to a one ball, two strike count. The Lions sit here with a one ball, two strike count with the runner in scoring position. Lawson reached via single and then moved up on a pass ball. Still going to keep the count as one ball, two strikes. Pitcher looks in, comes set, takes the runner at second. Here's the pitch. There's going to be a foul ball down the third baseline. Coach Max over there showing his athletic skills. Still working a one ball, two strike count here to the right fielder, Darwin Gregg. Pitch checks the runner there at second. Looks in, here's the line of the pitch. And there's gonna be a ball down. Look like a breaking ball in the dirt, bringing the count to a two ball, two strike count. Pitch. There's a swing and the ball's hammered to left field. Left fielder got a bad read at first, but was able to recover there, recording the first out of the inning. Darwin hits the ball really hard there. This is going to bring up our shortstop, number one, Dante Morton. We got one out here in the bottom of the first. The Lions are leading one to nothing via a solo home run by leadoff hitter Tyler Cullen. Pitcher looks in, gets the sign, comes set, takes the runner there at second. Here's the pitch. It's going to be ball down. Breaking ball in the dirt, bringing the count to a one ball, no strike count here on Morton. Lawson getting his lead there at second. Here's the pitch. 
It's going to be a fastball in there called strike one, bringing the count to a one ball, one strike count. That checks the runner. Here's the pitch. It'll be a breaking ball high and away. Moves it to a two ball, one strike count on Morton. Of course, Morton had the day off yesterday against Lindsey Wilson, been battling a little bit of a hamstring injury. Pitcher looks in, comes set. Here's the pitch. Ooh, the fastball's ripped into left field there. Coach Max is going to send Lofton around third. Here's the throw to the plate, cut off. Lofton slides in safe, making the score two to nothing. Bryan College Lions via an RBI single there by our shortstop number one, Dante Morton. Nice piece of hitting there and a good hitter's count. And that brings to the plate our center fielder, number 29, Daniel Driding, also known as Pawpaw on the team. Dryden had a RBI double yesterday against Lindsey Wilson. Pitcher looks in, gets his sign, comes set, checks Morton over there at first. Here's the pitch. It'll be in there for a ball inside. Brings the count to a one ball, no strike. Set, checks Morton there at first. Here's the pitch. It's going to be smoked down the third baseline, almost taking out Coach Mack there at third. But it's going to be foul, so that brings the count to a one ball, one strike count. Daniel Dryden put a good swing on that ball there. It's just a little out front, just going to be foul. Bringing the count even to a one ball, one strike. Cade Cahoon on deck. Pitch. That ball's hammered into deep left field off the fence. Left fielder making a leaking, leaping attempt was unable to get there. And Dryden is going to coast into second with a stand up double off the left field fence. He may hit that one a little too hard. Had some top spin on it. Hit right off the goal line sign out there in left field. Morton moves up to third there on the base hit, the double by Dryden. That comes to the plate is going to be our second baseman, number five, Kate Cahoon. We got runners at second and third here in the bottom of the first. One out. Here's a pitch. That's going to be a swing and a foul ball straight into the catcher's mitt. Brings the count to a no ball, one strike count. Here's the one out. The Lions so far have two runs on four hits. DC Cullen with off home run, Lofton with the single. Pitcher comes set, here's the pitch. There's going to be a swing and a miss on a fastball away. Bring the count to a no ball, two strike count on the second baseman, Kay Cahoon. We've got Og standing on deck, who's the designated hitter for today. Pitcher gets the sign, catcher sets up. Here's the pitch. It's going to be fastball down. Good leave there by Cahoon. Brings the count to a one ball, two strike count here with runners in scoring position. Pitcher has a sign and comes set. Here's the pitch. It's going to be called strike three there on the inner half. Pretty good pitch there by the pitcher. And that's going to be the second out of the inning. And coming to the plate is the designated hitter for today, uh, number four, Devin Ogg, who was two for three yesterday with a couple of RBIs and a double and a couple of walks. Pitcher comes set. Here's the pitch. It's going to be a fastball in the other batter's box for ball one. Good take there by the fifth-year senior, Devin Ogg. Pitcher comes set here. Dryden at second, Morton at third. Here's a pitch, and that's going to be a curveball inside. Moves the count to a two-ball, no-strike count here. It's a good count for Ogg to be ready to hit in. He's probably going to get something here to hit on a plus count.
Here's the pitch. Ooh, curveball in there for a call to strike one. Two ball, one strike count. Here on our designated hitter number four, Devin Ogg. Pitcher comes set. Here's pitch to Ogg. There's going to be swing and a foul ball down the left field line off into foul territory up on the hill. Now moves the count to a two-ball, two-strike count here on the designated hitter, Devin Ogg. Base hit here is going to bring the score to four to nothing here, so see if Ogg can get a big two-out hit. Here's pitch. It's going to be fastball way outside out of the zone. That moves the count to three balls, two strikes, two outs. Of course, the runner's not going to be in motion because there's not a runner at first, but they will be moving on contact here with two outs, so... See if I can get a big two out hit here. Pitcher comes set. Here's a pitch. And swing and a miss. Strike three. At the end of one, two runs on four hits. Two runners left on base at the bottom of the first. It will be the Bryan Co College Lions two and Truett McConnell zero as we move into the top half of the second. Okay. So this one.
Price gets ahead there in the count with the no balls, one strike. There's runner's going to be in motion. It's going to be a ground ball or a shortstop. Morden for a short throw. TC is not able to handle the pick there. Runner's going to move up to second and third. Going to be throwing area there by our shortstop. Kind of a tough play there for Morton. He was moving towards second to cover the bag with the base runner in motion. And kind of had to redirect to get to the ground ball. So, again, we're still on top of the second. Got one out. Bears are threatening here with runners at second and third. Price with the pitch. It's going to be a ball outside to a 1 0 count. Price here to get back in the count as he's facing Caleb Gentry. Here's wide in the pitch. It's going to be a ground ball swung chop foul down the third baseline. Bounces right over the short fence there. Makes it to, moves it to a one ball, one strike count with one out. The corners are up for the Lions looking to cut the run off at the plate. In the middle infield, Cahoon and Morton are back deep to take the out. And here's a pitch. And it's going to be Breaking ball inside for a two ball, one strike count. Price Harrison needs to get back in the count here. Here's a pitch. It's going to be a slider. It's going to be swing and chops back to the backstop. Now moves the count to a two ball, two strike count. New Price had a good outing last weekend against the Union Bulldogs. He has a sign that comes in. Here's the pitch. It's going to be fastball just a tad bit outside. Looked pretty good from up here. That moves the count to a three ball, two strike count. Umpires got a little tighter zone than most umpires. And here's the pitch for Price. It's going to be a little handle shot out to our shortstop, Morden, who fields and throws across to get the first out of the second out of the inning. However, the Bears are able to. Move a run across the plate. That brings the score to uh, two, two to one. Lions are up. And umpire, kind of like he was tapping his chest, looking into the Brian dugout like he'd missed the call before. But that's that's part of the game. Price gets the sign. Here's the pitch. Fastball in there. It's going to be called a ball. Looked a little low. Two outs here in the top of the second. Scores two to one. Price with the pitch. It's going to be a chopper. It's going to make it through the infield past a ranging loft in and a diving Morton. And that's going to tie the ball game up two to two on a little C and I single there. Tough break there for the Lions defensively. Of course, the Warmer conditions are going to kind of speed the ball up a little bit, especially on a drier infield. And Coach Max making his way out to the mound. It looks like we're going to have a pitching change. So Harrison Price, the line for the day, he's going to go one and two thirds. He's going to give up two runs, both of them are unearned, with four hits and an error. Way to the left baseman, to number 35, Jacob Altman, who's going to be coming in relief for the runner at first. And we're going to take a TV timeout here as Altman gets his warm up pitches, and we'll be right back.
as Almond finishes his warm-up pitches here. If you're just now joining us, the count is, I mean, the score is 2-2. Two to two With an RBI single by the last Stuart McConnell batter. Drive in tying run. And Almond, Jacob Almond on the pitch for the Lions. Don't have any stat numbers for him. This is his, uh, he's made several appearances and Almond's been throwing the ball really well for the Lions, especially out of the bullpen and the closer role. So we got two outs here in the top of the second with a runner at first. Almond looks and gets a sign and here's first pitch breaking ball in there for a call, strike one. And up just walked uh, Bryson Lofton's grandparents who made the trip from the great state of Alabama to join us today on this beautiful day of baseball. Almond gets a sign. Here's a pick at first. Runner diving back safe. And by the way, for the ones that don't know who I am, this is Brad Lofton. I'm Bryson Lofton's dad. There's nobody down here doing it, so I figured I would go ahead and make my PA announcer's debut. Almond um, looks in. Here's another throw over to first. Runners back safely. Almond um, gets the sign. Looks in. The runner takes off. It's going to be a curveball in there for a call strike two. Bradley's Prince's throw down to second from his knee. Not in time, although it was a pretty good throw there by the catcher, Bradley Prince, from the knee. Really good shot there. And that's going to, that pitch there called strike two. So that's going to make the count no balls, two strikes. And Prince out to talk to Almond to kind of get on the same page here with a runner at second. And of course, in the situation where you have a runner at second, of course, he's straight on with the catcher. So they're probably going to go through a series of signs. If not, they'll use the new the new wristwatches that they use to call pitches on. And it looks like that's what they're doing here is Cahoon's coming to the mound to give Almond his watch. And uh, back in the days when I played, we didn't have this fancy stuff, this technology stuff. So now these days they've got the fancy technology stuff to keep teams and coaches from uh, being able to tip the pitches that are being thrown. We got a runner at seconds in there with a stolen base. We got a no ball, two strike count here. Almond comes set. Kahu bounces out, and here's the pitch. It's going to be a fastball high. That brings the count to a one ball, two strike count. Not a bad spot there by Almond, especially after two breaking balls back to back. Almond looks in, gets a sign. The runner at second, he bounces, and here's the pitch. It's going to be a swing and a foul ball straight back up into the trees here. Going to bounce off the tree and roll back down the hill. Got to like that if you're a pitcher that's on foul ball duty today. Because I could imagine running up and down that hill. So sitting here at a one ball, two strike count. So I assume it's the number two hole hitter. Alma gets a sign and comes set. And here's a pitch. It's going to be a fastball in the dirt. Good read by the runner there moving up on a ball in the dirt. Tough break there for Bradley Prince. He was able to get over in front of it. So it was just kind of caromed away from him. So that fastball there is going to move the count to a two-ball, two-strike count. And on deck is the leading home run hitter for Stuart McConnell. And here's the pitch. It's going to be a ground ball out to Cahoon out at second. Fields it cleanly. Nice little flip over TC. And we got a got a diving tag. Cahoon with a, thought he had a little more time than what he did. Kind of nice, easy flip, nonchalant over there. TC has to dive in and tag the runner for the third out of the inning. And, of course, that moved the base up out of the ground. And Lofton's over to check on him and talk to the first base coach and, I guess, do his field maintenance duties. So uh, at the top of two, we uh, have a 2-2 two -two ball game with the Lions coming to bat here in the bottom half of the second. We'll be right back.
And leading off here in the bottom of the second is going to be our left fielder, number 26, Cade Cook. He's our number eight hole hitter. And here's the pitch. It's going to be swinging a towering fly ball foul straight back up this way. It's going to go to a no ball, one strike count. Here's the pitch to Cook. Fastball down and in. Nice stop there from the catcher to keep the ball off the umpire. And that goes to a one ball, one strike count here on Cook with Bradley Prince on deck. And here's the line of the pitch. It's going to be a hard ground ball back to the middle shortstop. Nice play. Nice play by the shortstop. And that's going to record the first out of the inning. That's going to go to a 6 3. And coming to the plate is going to be our catcher, number 12, Bradley Prince. As Bradley rolled in yesterday in the midweek game against Lincoln Wilson. Kind of had a, a quote-unquote day off, as we call it, in a midweek game. And they started the freshman, Jack. And he had a pretty good day. But uh, Bradley rolled in for defensive purposes later in the game. And now Truett's putting on a, I guess you could but a true lefty shift. They have moved the third baseman out in the right field. And there's going to be a breaking ball in there for a call strike one. Bradley looked like he showed bunt there, but that whole left side of the infield is completely open. Uh, yesterday during the game against Lincoln Wilson, the Blue Raiders attempted to do that against Lofton a couple of times in the innings where he was leading off. They would move the second baseman out in the outfield and play four outfielders. Got a one ball, one strike count there on Prince. That last breaking ball was inside. And there's a swing and a tip straight in the catcher's mitt. And that moves the count to a one ball, two strike count. Pitcher looks high, gets the sign. Here's the line and the pitch. It's going to be a fastball and just a tad bit outside. Pretty good spot there for the pitcher. Of course, if you're opposing there, coach, you want that call. And if you're Bradley Prince there hitting, you don't want that call, except for when you're catching. So here's a 2-2 pitch to Bradley Prince. It's going to be a fastball in there. That's going to be a call strike three. And that's going to bring up our leadoff hitter and our first baseman, number 17, Tyler Cullen who first at bat took the first pitch of the game and hit a deep fly ball for a solo home run. So he's one for one on the day. Pitcher looks in, gets the sign, and here's the pitch. It's going to be a breaking ball way outside. Makes the count one ball, no strikes. Pitcher looks in. Here's the pitch, 2-2. Two -two. It's going to be... Fastball hits him in the front hip. Looked like, well, I thought it hit him in the hip. I guess everybody saw that but the umpire. But, hey, we'll take it. That moves TC to a two-ball no-strike count, which is what we want because that's a good count for Tyler Cullen here to, to really do some damage here on a swing. And here's the pitch. There's the swing, and that's going to be a in on his hand. There's going to be a pop-up to the first baseman who is not able to handle it. Looks like he kind of got his knee crossed up there where the turf and the grass meet and uh, caused him to trip and fall. TC catches the break there. Of course, being a baseball guy, that always kind of comes back to haunt you. A routine pop fly that should be recorded for an out ends up being something that hurts you here. With two outs and nobody on, Here's the pitch, and there's going to be a swing and a foul ball down the right field line out of play, moving the count to two balls, two strikes. We've got the third baseman, Bryson Lofton, on deck. Two balls, two strikes here to the lefty. Here's the line and the pitch to TC. It's going to be a swing and a foul ball straight back to the screen. And there's a race to go get the foul ball, and Lofton is beat by the coach, so therefore he gets the ball, he lost the race. Of course, Lofton's not the swiftest, but we all kind of know that from years past. But, hey. So we're still sitting here. Two ball, two strike count for TC. 
He again homered his last time up. Here's the pitch. That's going to be a swinging slow roller ground ball. Backhand by the shortstop. Good throw over to record Tyler Cullen for the third out in there in the bottom of the second. So after two complete, the scores through at McConnell Bears 2 and the Bryan College Lions 2. And we'll be right back here with the top of the third. Turn the microphone down a little bit on this camera mic to kind of maybe help with some of the wind. As we move to the top of the third, the Bears will have number 99, Ramsey, up to lead off the inning. Top of the third, leading off the inning will be number 99, Ramsey. And here's the first pitch from Allman, and there's going to be a curveball called ball one, maybe just a little off the plate. Got a beautiful day outside. It's sunny in about 74 here. Great day for, for baseball. Here's where this is game one of the doubleheader. So this game is going to be a nine-inning game. Next game will be the seven. Here's Allman. Another the breaking ball is going to be in there. Ball high, 2-0 count. Looks in, gets the sign, and comes set. Here's a pitch from Almond. It's going to be fastball high, 3 0 count, which still isn't a bad idea as Ramsey has come in. He's got, I think, eight home runs on the season for Truett McConnell, leading the Bears in home runs. Here's a pitch. It's going to be in there. Fastball called strike one. So that makes it a 3 1 count. And Ramsey is taken all the way there on a 3 0. Allman gets a sign. Here's pitch. Fastball fouled straight back. Good pitch there, Allman. We've got to have a little power versus power there with a power pitcher and a power hitter. Allman challenges there with a 3-1 fastball, and Ramsey has fouled it straight back. So that now brings it to a three-ball, two-strike count here. Allman looks in, gets a sign. Here's pitch. It's going to be a swing. It's going to look like it got off his hands a little bit. So Allman kind of got a late break on the ball. Cahoon goes out. I think that was one of those. Darwin may have thought it would hit harder than what it was. He just got a bad jump on the ball. So Ramsey reaches with a single to right. It's his first hit of the day. His first at bat, he was hit by pitch. So we got nobody out here in the second inning. Allman on the mound, looks in, gets a sign. Picks the runner over at first. He's back easy. And this is their number four hole hitter, I think, flied out to center field last time. Allman looks in, gets a sign. Here's the pitch. It's going to be ball high. 1-0. and oh. Allman's having a little trouble finding the zone here. Of course, Allman's probably one of the harder velo guys on the team. Throws, he's usually 91, 92. Throws really hard. Got a good breaking ball. Here's the pitch. It's going to be a curveball in outside. Moves the count to two balls, no strikes here at the top of the third. Of course, it's a 2 2 ball game. Allman checks the runner. Here's the pitch. It's going to be ball three. Ball kind of gets away from Prince. <coughs> Ramsey didn't get a great read over there. He was headed back to the bag. 
now we're at a three ball, no strike count here for Almond. We've got a little trouble. Almond's having a little trouble finding the, the strike zone. Still one pitch away from getting two outs. Ground ball here. Be a double play. And here's Almond with a pitch. It's going to be outside for a ball four. So the Bears are threatening here in the top of the third with runners at first and second. Nobody out. Parent butting situation here for sure with the number five hole hitter. That's uh, one thing Coach Crowley and Truett known for is the small ball, and they do a really good job at it. They're a very good bunting team. Here we got the clear for square, and that's an attempted bunt foul straight back. That's the count, no balls, one strike. Like I said, it's Coach Crowley has really done well with the Bears over the years. And their small ball game, they kind of play the game the right way with the small ball. They, they are able to execute their bunts and their hit and run. Not really known as a power hitting team. Alma looks in, gets the sign, checks runner at second. Here's pitch, he squares, and there's going to be a fastball in there for a call, strike two. So you got no balls, two strikes here with a runner at first and second. Alma checks the wrist for the pitch, checks the runner at second. Still, never know, not ever made bump with two strikes. Here's a wide pitch, and it's going to be a foul ball. Straight back over here into the one of the heels, and that's the life of a pitcher that you don't want to go. You don't want to have to go shag that one that went up the hill. So we're still working with a no ball, two strike count here. Almond checks the runner. Here's pitch. It's going to be a base hit in the right field. Looks like he just reached out and slapped the breaking ball. Darwin up with the throw. CC cut it, so now that's going to be. Bases loaded with nobody out here as the Bears are threatening. Nice job of hitting there by the Bears hitter with two strikes. Kind of just put it in play there, go the opposite way, just try to get runners over. So now we're no balls, nobody out here with bases loaded. Corners are up. Lofton and Cullen are even with the bag looking for a ground ball to them to go to the plate. Morton and Cahoon are back deep with a double play in the middle. Almond comes set. Here's the pitch. It's going to be a called. Strike one, fastball in there. Nice pitch to get ahead there in the count. And I'm checking the new technology on baseball that's out now. It's like he's trying to tell what time it is, but he's actually getting a good pitch call from the dugout from Coach Mack. I'm going to come set. Here's the pitch. It's going to be a fastball down. Evens the count, one ball, one strike. Ball one strike here. Nobody out here in the top of the third. Almond gets the sign. Here's pitch. It's going to be a fastball. Deep fly ball to center field. Dryden is camped out under it. Runner will be tagging from third. Dryden with a throw to shortstop. Cut off by Morton. As Ramsey scores easily. Sacrifice fly there. Nice job there by the hitter. So now that's going to be the first out of the inning. With the runner still at first and second. And again, you never never know with Truett and Coach Crowley. Still a small ball situation here. Almond checks the runner at second. And here's the pitch. It's going to be a breaking ball down. Makes a count one ball, no strikes. If Almond can find his breaking ball today, long to go with his fastball, he could be really, really, really effective. Here's the pitch. Fastball up. It's going to go to a 2 0 -oh count. Almond checks the runner. Here's pitch. It's going to be a ground ball to Morton. That should be two. There's a six, four, three. Double play. Oh, they just caught him safe. I think TC may have dropped the ball over there at first. Taylor made double play ball there. Cahoon kind of rushed his throw with an off-balance throw, and the runner is going to be safe at first. That's going to be the – really can't consider that an error because you can't assume the double play. But that does allow the runner to move to third. So now here we are. We're going to sit first and third with two outs in the third of the inning. The Bears are up three to two. They were able to take the lead on a sacrifice fly. 
Allman looks in. Here's the pitch. It's going to be from there for a call, strike one. I think maybe the base runner at first may have missed the sign there because he showed bunt and took the strike. I think they were trying to set up the steal there. As Coach Day steps out of the dugout and gives Dolvin Gregg, the right fielder, to come in. Allman looks in, gets the sign. Here's pitch. Breaking ball down. One ball, one strike. Pretty good take there by the hitter. So we got a one ball count. One ball, one strike count with two outs here in the third. Bears are still threatening here. Alma gets the sign. Here's the pitch. It's going to be a breaking ball foul straight back to me over my head. So that's going to move the count to a one ball, two strike count. Gets the sign and comes set, checks the runner at first. And here's pitch. Fastball is going to be punched to the right side. Drops in foul territory. Still keeping a one ball, two strike count. Allman checks the runner at first. Comes set. Here's pitch. Going to be fouled. Fastball fouled straight back. Nice job there by the hitter again. Staying in the count, fighting off two really good pitches there. Almonds kind of ran into some trouble here in the third inning with back to back walks and then a single. And then, of course, the sack fly. Checks the runner at first. You got a small lead there. Looking to take off anytime. Here's pitch. It's going to be a breaking ball. It's going to be chopped out there to the shortstop. Morton, who is not able to handle the ground ball, kind of hesitated a little bit coming in to get it. And the Bears are going to score a run there. That's going to bring the score four to two now. Still in two outs in the top of the third. We've got two runs so far off one hit. There's a pitch by Allman. It's going to be fastball up. Nice job by Bradley to be able to keep it from getting to the backstop there. Allman checking the runner there at second. Here's a pitch. That's going to be ball two. Strike zone. France is out to talk with him. I think Alman just needs to settle down out here a little bit. Got a little having a little trouble finding the strike zone. Then you kind of run into the problem when you try to aim it across the plate. Then you try to throw it as hard as you can. Got to get back within his mechanics here. He's still one pitch away from getting out of the inning. Checking the runner there for a second. Here's a pitch. There's going to be a fastball in there. Called strike one. Good pitch there by Allman. Checking the runner at second again. Here's the pitch. Swing and that's going to be a drive down the right field line, but it's going to be foul. Nice play out there by the bullpen. That looks like Luke Townsend. Too bad we're not playing banana ball rules or he would be out. Of course, Savannah Bananas, the way it works with Savannah Bananas, if you hit a foul ball in the stands and the fans catch it, you're recorded as an out. But that's not the way it works here. Allman checks the runner. Here's pitch. It's going to be a fastball up and away. Moves to a three ball, two strike count. Runners will be in motion here on this pitch. Allman checks the runners. Defense will hold the ground as the runners take off. Here's a swing and it's a foul straight back. Still sitting at a three two count here. Two outs at the top of the third. Set, gives his runner 
Turner at second to look. Trying to remove it. Here's the pitch. There's going to be a fly ball to TC there at first. He kind of drifts into foul territory and is able to record the out there. So after three and a half, Stuart McConnell four, Bryant College two. As Bryant comes to the lead, comes to the inning, starting the inning, it will be due up will be number hitters number two, three, and four. I'd like to give a shout out to some of the parents back in Calhoun, Georgia. Uh, my wife and Bryson Lofton's mom, Jenny Lofton, who unfortunately had to work today. And Morton, Dante Morton's mom and dad, and Bryce Engel's mom and dad, if they're watching. said this will be this is game one of the double header this is the nine inning game the next game will be the seven inning game and they are slated to play Saturday at two I believe and that will also be a nine inning uh, contest as this is a AAC conference uh, series Pitchers here finishing up his warm up tosses here as we get ready to start the bottom of the third here. And leading off the Lions will be the third baseman, number 44, Bryson Lofton. I also need to give a shout out to Austin Pratt, his brother, who is listening and watching. And again, the Lions or the Bears look like they're going to go with a another lefty shift here as they move the third baseman out in the right field. Lindsey Wilson tried this yesterday and Lofton was able to record two hits. And here's wine at the pitch. It's going to be a fastball rip back up the middle. Shortstop again had him played perfect. Uh, tough break there. Lofton is recorded with a 6-3 put out. As you can hear the winds picking up. Coming to the plate is going to be the right fielder, number 11, Darwin Gregg, who lined out to left his first at bat. Here's a wind in the pitch. There will be ball down, one ball, no strike count. Darwin, who is tied for the team lead in home runs with eight. Here's a slow looping breaking ball out of the zone, high and away, makes the count two and zero. Oh. Pitcher checks his wrist guard there for the call from the dugout, looks in, gets a sign, and here's pitch to Greg. It's going to be a swing and a foul ball chopped into the dugout, moves the count to two balls, one strike. pitch and it's going to be ball high that moves the count to a three ball one strike count here pitcher's got to be careful here with Greg because in one swing it could be a four to three ball game because Darwin's got extreme power to not just pull side but also to the entire field here's the pitch to Greg that's going to be a big swing and a miss good cut there so now it moves to a full count ball may have been a little bit up but in that situation with Greg, who's one of your better hitters on the team, kind of wanting to see what he can do in one swing. So here's wine in the pitch, and it's going to be a towering fly ball into right field. Right fielder's moving over. Looks like he's going to have room. He's, oh, he almost misjudged it there. But Darwin is recorded on an F9. And now coming to the plate, it's going to be our shortstop, number one, Dante Morton who is one for one on the day with a RBI single to left. And here's the pitch to Morton. It's going to be a swing, and that's going to be a deep fly ball to center field. Wind's just not carrying it today. To, as Morton put a good swing there on that ball, hit it deep center field. 
And the Lions were 43 up, three down here in the bottom of the third. So after three complete, that's going to move your score. Stuart McConnell Bears, four. Bryan College Lions, two. Here we are back in the top of the fourth inning. On the pitch for the Lions is number three, David Walker. And in steps the number, get ready to tell his number, it's Ethan Roberts. Looks like the leadoff hitter for the Bears. Here's the pitch by Walker. First pitch is gonna be called balled high. Makes count one ball, no strikes here to the leadoff hitter. Walker with the pitch. There's a called strike one fastball in there, bringing the count even to a one ball, one strike count. Walker gets the sign. Here's the pitch. Fastball high and tight. Walker's another one of those. High velocity pitchers, he can get up around 91, 92 as well. Got a real live arm. Looks in, here's the pitch. It'll be a slow slider in there. Good pitch by Walker. There in a 2-1 count. Most hitters there are looking fastball, but instead he gets a slider, so he takes it. So that moves the count. Two balls, two strikes here with nobody out. And another slider there for by Walker. Now that moves the count to a three ball, two strike count here. Of course, it's crucial here to always retire the leadoff hitter of the inning. You definitely don't want to walk him. So we got three balls, two strikes. Nobody out here to the leadoff hitter, and here's the pitch. That's going to be ball four. Walker has walked the leadoff guy, and that brings the two-hole hitter to the plate. Looks like this is definitely in a, a bunting situation here for the Bears. Walker looks and gets the sign. Lofton's up on the edge of the grass here expecting a bunt. Here's a pitch from Walker. There's a fastball in there for a call. Strike one. See Coach Crowley there. Third is dealing out a series of numbers where the base runners and the hitter is going to check their wrist guards. 
There's Allman with a pitch throw over to first. Runners back safely. Walker's another one of those righties that's got a really good move. Real quick, he gets the ball over real quick with his footwork. Walker looks like he's trying to check the runner. Here's the pitch. There's a looping curveball popped up to left field. Cook's going to camp out under it. He calls Morton off. And again, like I said, the wind's not really carrying the ball today. It's kind of blowing in. But that's going to be the first out of the inning. Up next will be the right fielder, number nine, Ramsey. Again, like I said earlier, is the Bears' leading home run hitter. Walker gets a sign. There's a throw over to first. Not in time. Pretty good move there. Takes a good throw there to Colin. May retire the hitter there. I mean, excuse me, retire the base runner there. Again, Walker checking the wrist when they're calling pitches now. Here's the sign. And here's the pitch. Going to be a slider in there for a call. Strike one. Nice pitch there by Walker to get ahead in the count. So we got one out here in the top of the fourth. Lions are trailing four to two. Walker gets a sign. Here's the pitch. There's a fastball down and away. That's a one ball, one strike count now. And a ground ball here is big here for the Lions because it gets them out of the inning. There's another attempt throw over to first. Runners back safely. Boy, the step and a dive there. Pretty good move there by Walker to keeping the runner close. Of course, having a pitcher be able to hold runners on will definitely help the catcher out when it comes to base runner trying to steal. And here's a pitch. Ah, it's a swing and a miss there on a changeup. Really good pitch there by Walker, which for left-handed hitters, that's probably one of the hardest pitches to hit is a right-handed changeup. But now we're Walker's up with a one-ball, two-strike count. And here's a pitch, and there's another swing and a miss on another changeup. Walker's really got the changeup working the lefties. And again, that's one of the harder pitches for left-handed hitters to, to swing at. Again, because it looks so much like a fastball coming out of their hand. And it, of course, it's being a, an aggressive hitter like Ramsey. He's going to chase that pitch. Now that brings up the four-hole hitter. I think it's the first baseman. Walker with another attempt to throw over. He gets away from no, And it hit the umpire. Boy, the Lions catch a break there. As it hit off, looks like the umpire's wrist. And of course, Walker zips that thing over there, probably close to 90 miles an hour. And of course, then it hits against the short hop, so it picks up a little more velo there. As it, the third base umpire is over to check on his partner. He gives him the Thumbs up to the home plate umpire. Coach Crowley's talking to the home plate umpire to make sure he's good as well. The Lions caught a break there with the umpire kind of quote unquote getting in the way. Walker looks in, gets the sign. Here's the pitch. It's going to be a curveball in there for a call. Strike one. Nice job by Walker there to be able to get ahead in the count. 0-1. Walker gets the sign, checks the runner first, checks it again. Here's the pitch. It's going to be another curveball in there for a swing and a miss on strike two. Again, like I said, Walker's fastball is in the low 90s. And then he's got the off-speed stuff working with the changeup and the slider. He's kind of got to sit on it. There's a base runner's taking off. There's a throw down by Bradley, and that's a – oh, and Cahoon dropped the ball. Nice job, Bradley. Nice shot. Tough break. Tough break. Of course, base runner's sliding in hard. Cahoon's kind of – of course, they're taught now these days to catch and tag straight down instead of go out, get the ball, and bring it back, which makes sense. That's kind of what look, Cade looked like he was doing was to go catch it straight down with a tag. But the runner was able to record a stolen base, but we're at a one ball, two strike count. Walker checks the runner at second. He gets a secondary, and there's a swing and a miss. Strike three. Bradley kind of dropped it and was able to tag the runner there. So after four and a half, 
Scores four to two. Bears are up by two. Lions are coming up here in the bottom of the fourth. We'll be right back. And here we are back in the bottom of the fourth inning. And our center fielder, number 29, Daniel Driding, set to lead off the bottom of the fourth. Dryden, Dryden is one for one, but they double off the go line sign out in left field. And here's a pitch. There's going to be a fastball high for a called ball one. Again, like I said, the umpire's got a pretty tight zone. Pretty, pretty consistent all day long with it. Which, for a hitter, that's what you want because you don't get anything off the plate. There's going to be a slow curveball. It's going to be foul straight back here. Uh, barely missed the whiteboard escape. So that's going to even the count to a one ball, one strike count. To Dryden, who's also, you'll hear the dugout refer to him as Paw Paul. Here's a pitch to Dryden. It's going to be a fastball. It's going to be popped up to the right field. That's going to may maybe trouble. That's kind of no man's land. Ramsey with a late break on it. And that's going to be the first out of the inning on an F9 pop fly by number 29 Dryden. Now batting will be our second baseman, number five, Cade Cahoon, who was 0 for 1 with a strikeout looking last at bat. Here's the wind of the pitch. Be a fastball taken outside for ball one. Cahoon's been one of the consistent guys on the team this year hitting. Here's a line of pitch to Cahoon. There's going to be another towering fly ball to left field. Short stops out. Left fielder is going to call him off and take it. That's going to be recorded as an F7. So two quick outs here for the Lions. Next up will be our designated hitter, number four, Devin Ogg, who is 0 for 1, who also struck out his last time up. And again, you see the third baseman shifting out to short right field. It's the old lefty shift for the dead pull hitter here as Ogg shows bunt, pulls back and takes ball one. But it's a pretty good idea there with Ogg with the Pretty much the whole left side of the infield completely open, so a bunt down the third baseline is definitely going to be the hit. And, of course, he tempts the event bunt there, misses it, so that goes to a one ball, one strike count. Now, if he just had just a little simple slow roller down the third baseline and have it trickle out to foul territory, I'm going to have a stand-up double with ease. Here's the pitch. It's going to be a fastball down and in called ball two. So that makes the count two balls, one strike here to Og. He's looking for his first hit of the day. There's a ball out there on the outside corner. So that now makes the count to a 3-1. Dangerous left-handed hitter, Og, who one swing can put it out there in the pine trees. And here's a wind of the pitch to Og. That's going to be in there called strike two. 
Pretty good pitch there on the outside corner, outer half. That makes the count three balls, two strikes. To number four, a designated hitter, Devin Ogg. And here's a wind and a pitch to Ogg. And he's going to foul that one off the backstop. Still keeping the count full as pitch out to the tree. The ball as it rolls right back to the umpire. Two outs here in the bottom of the fourth. Lions are trailing four to two. And here's a pitch to Og. It's going to be a ball down and in. And that's going to be three two walk there by Og. Coming to the plate will be our left fielder, number 26, Cade Cook, who also, in one swing, can tie this ball game up. And Cook hits, hits the lefty really, really, really well. Cook, who's 0 for 1 on the day. Checks the runner there at first. Og, and here's a pitch. That's going to be fastball inside, foul straight back. Nice swing there by Cook. Seems to be right on the fastball. The one thing about this lefty, looks like he's attacking fastball in. Checks the runner at first. Here's a pitch. A swing and a foul ball off to the right side. So that moves the count to no balls, two strikes here on the left fielder, number 26, Cade Cook. Pitcher gets the sign, comes set. Here's a pitch. Aug is off and running, and there's another foul ball straight back. Still keeping the count at no balls, two strikes. at the double header. This is going to be the nine inning contest. The next game will be the seven innings. Og gets a short lead over there. Here's the move over the first. Og's back easy. So we're still working here in the no ball two strike count on the left fielder number 26, Cade Cook. Pitcher gets the sign, comes set, checks Og at first. Here's a pitch. It's going to be a curveball down in the dirt. Nice job by the catcher. Home plate umpire checks with the first base runner on the or first base umpire on the check swing, and he says he did not go. So that moves the count to one ball, two strikes on the left fielder, number 26, Kate Cook. Pitcher has a sign come set. Checks Og over there at first. Here's the pitch. Og is off and running. There's going to be a foul ball into the Truett McConnell dugout, bouncing off the Net facing there in front of the dugout. Straight to Coach Mack there at third. He's going to show off that cannon there. Back in the days, Coach Mack was about 93, 94 off the mound, according to Coach Day. <laughs> so Cook here still in a one ball, two strike count. Fouled off a couple pitches. Og with a short lead. Pitcher checks the runner. Here's the pitch. That's going to be a fastball high and in. That moves the count to two balls, two strikes here on our left fielder, number 26, Cade Cook. Pitcher has a sign come set, gives Og another look there. Here's the pitch. That's going to be smoked out there in the left center gap. That ball's going to get all the way down to the, get to the fence. Og rounds second. He's trucking. Og's going to score with ease there, and that's going to be a two-out double and a run scoring. By number four, Devin Ogg. Nice piece of hitting there by Cade Cook, who was able to foul off several tough pitches and then get something up in the zone and drive it out to the left center gap for a stand-up double with an RBI. And coming to the plate, it's going to be our catcher, number 12, Bradley Prince, who is 0 for 1 on the day with a strikeout here. And a, a base hit here is going to move the game to a 4-4 tie here. So, again, with a runner at second, I don't think Truett's going to be able to do their lefty shift here as they keep the third baseman at home and second baseman shift more towards right field there, deep right field. And uh, Cook there at second gets his lead. Pitcher gets his sign, comes set, checks the runner. Here's the first pitch to Bradley. That's going to be a call, strike one on the fastball. So, a pitcher gets ahead in the count, 0-1. Bradley looking for his first hit of the day. 
pitcher gets a sign, comes set. Here's the pitch. That's going to be a fastball. That ball's going to be hammered out to left center field. That ball's going to get got a chance, and it's out of here. Bradley Prince, two-run bomb to left field. Nice job. Fastball middle of the way, got the barrel to it, and drove it out there over the Kaler Industrial sign for a two-run home run there to put the Lions up. Five to four. Nice job by our catcher there, fifth-year senior Bradley Prince with a two-run home run to opposite field. Nice job of hitting there. Of course, that's uh, after T, after Cook was able to drive in Og there and then reach on the double and then scores easily on the two-run home run. And that brings our leadoff hitter, TC, up. Here's a pitch to TC, and that's going to be a breaking ball in there for a call of strike one. TC is one for two on the day. He's led off the game with a solo home run in the first inning. Pitcher gets a sign. Here's a pitch, and that's going to be a curveball fouled off to the right side. Now moves the count to no balls, two strikes with the third baseman, Bryson Lofton, on deck. Lions got a little momentum here with a two-run blast by Bradley Prince. And there's a pitch, and TC with another foul ball. Oh, off the light pole, if he catches it, he's still safe. Although, banana ball rules, technically by rules, Savannah, Savannah banana ball, he is out, but not here at Bryan College in NAIA baseball. So TC battling here, got no balls, two strike, catcher sets up. Here's the fastball, that's gonna be up and away for a called ball, one ball, two strikes here. To our leadoff hitter, number 17, Tyler Cullen. Here's winding a pitch, and it's going to be a breaking ball. It's going to be a ground ball at the shortstop. Of course, the shortstop's pretty smooth out there, and that's going to be recorded for the third out of the inning. So after four complete, Brian College five, Truett McConnell Bears four. As we'll take a 30 second timeout, and we'll resume in the top of the fifth. All right, here we are back at the top of the fifth with David Walker still on the mound for the Lions. It looks like we have Caleb Williams. No, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, Caleb Williams here hitting for the Bears in the top of the fifth. Defense alignment for the Bears. Lofton at third, Morton at short, Cahoon at second, Cullen at first. Outfield left to right is going to be Cook, Dryden, and Greg. And on the mound will be Walker in that first pitch is called outside for a ball one. Here's a pitch from Walker. Now he's behind the count, 2-0. Oh. So we have two balls, no strike count here on the hitter in the top of the fifth. Walker with a pitch with the fastball. Now it's going to be called strike one. Hitter apparently was there taking the entire way. So we got two ball, one strike count. Here's a pitch from Walker, and that's going to be a sweeping breaking ball outside. So now we're to a 3-1 count. Walker needs to get back here to the count. 
pitch here. Walk near pitch. That's going to be a swing and a foul ball off to the right side up that hill. Maybe it'll have enough momentum to roll back down the hill. So here we are. That brings the count to three balls, two strikes with nobody out here in the leadoff hitter of the inning. Walker comes set. Here's the pitch. That's going to be a ground ball back up the middle to Morton. Kicks off the side of the mound. Morton with a low throw. Nice job by Cullen over there with a backhand pick. That's going to record the first out of the inning. Six to three. And bringing coming to the plate is going to be number 17, Jordan Kentry. If I pronounce any of these names wrong, I do apologize as Coach Crowley's uh, sheet has blown out of the dugout. <laughs> We got one out here in the top of the fifth. As you can hear, the wind is really picking up. And of course, it's blowing straight in. And there's first pitch fastball in there for a call of strike one. Of course, this breeze feels really good out here today with a, about a 75 degree. There's another fastball in there for a call of strike two. It looks like Walker's kind of finding his groove here. He's starting to attack the zone a little more. So we got a no ball, two strike hitter count here. Walker, here's another pitch, fastball called, strike three. As we refer to that, is good morning, good afternoon, and good night. It was a three-pitch strikeout there by number three, David Walker. And that's going to move to two outs here in the top of the fifth. And that's is going to bring Micah Marcello to the plate. That's going to be a fastball a little low. Nice spot there for a Walker. That's going to be a... No, one ball, no strike count. Maricello is 0 for 2 on the day. Here's the pitch by Walker. That's going to be a fastball out. Brings the count to 2 and 0. I'd be expecting the hitter to take here to try to run Walker's pitch count up. That's kind of what Truett's known for is being really disciplined at the plate. And that's going to move the count to a 3 0. I may have spoke, spoke too soon when I said Walker had found his zone. But that's the way it goes in baseball. You get two quick outs, and that third hitter is hard to get. So now we're at a 3-0 count. It's definitely a take situation here with the hitter. And here's the pitch. That's going to be a fastball in there for a call. Strike one makes the count three balls and one strike. Walker just needs to attack with fastballs right here. And here's the pitch. That's going to be a swing and a miss. Strike two. It's going to move the count to a full count. And if I'm Coach Mack and – and David Walker right here. I'm just attacking with another fastball here and saying, hey, here it is, here's the can, here's the pitch. And there it is. That's going to be a swing and a miss. Walker able to come back from a 3-0 count and get hitter on a swing and a miss, strike three. So after five and a half, the score remains Bryan College five, Truett McConnell four. The Lions come to this inning. They're going to be at the heart of their lineup with two, three, and four. We'll be right back with a 30-second break. Here we are in the bottom of the fifth, and leading off for the Lions is going to be their third baseman, number 44, Bryson Lofton, who is one for two on the day with well, a single up the middle and grounded out to short, as you can see, 
they have the lefty shift going here again. It's the third baseman that's moved out to short right field. And here's a pitch. That's going to be fastball up. Making a one ball, no strike count here to Lofton. He was tied for the team lead in home runs with eight with Darwin Gregg. Here's the wind in the pitch. It's going to be a swing and a miss on a hanging breaking ball. Pretty good cut there for Lofton. He looked like he was right on that slider. And again, he's one of those, another one of those lefties. He can get it down the third baseline. That's going to be an easy stand up double for him. And here we are at a one ball, one strike count. Here's the pitch. It's going to be a fastball up and in. He's fouled straight back. Moves the count to one and two here on Lofton. And the left handed pitcher checks his wrist guard here, gets a sign. Here's the wind in the pitch. There's going to be a ground ball. The shortstop ranges over. And Lofton beats the shift again, as he did twice yesterday against Lindsey Wilson. Kind of looked like there Lofton was set on a something off speed and kind of got beat with a fastball, but was still able enough to poke it through that left side there for the seventh hit on the day for the Lions. And it's Lofton's second hit of the day, which he doesn't look like he's real happy there at first. But... That's going to get to our right fielder, number 11, Darwin Gregg, here with a runner at first. It's a chance for the Lions to put together a good inning here. Here's the pitch. It's going to be a fastball down and in. Nice job by the catcher to stop that pitch there. Brings the count to one ball, no strikes to Darwin Gregg. Again, like I said, he is tied for the team lead in home runs with eight. Lofton's short lead over there. Runner Pitcher checks, here's pitch to Greg. It's going to be a slow looping curveball in there for a call, strike one. Pitcher's done a pretty good job of keeping Brian College hitters off balance to mix in his breaking ball and then kind of sneak the fastball in there. So Greg here, runner, checks the runner at first. Here's pitch to Greg. It's going to be a fastball foul straight back. Good cut there by Darwin. As you can tell, he looked a little upset that he missed that fastball up in the zone. But like I said, the pitcher's done a pretty good job of keeping the Brian hitters off balance, mixing it up really well. So now we got a one ball, two strike count here on the right fielder, number 11, Darwin Gregg. Again, has some serious power to all parts of the field. Here's the pitch. That's going to be a fastball foul straight back again. Another good hack there for Gregg. As you can tell, there is no choke up to put it in play philosophy here with Greg with two strikes. He's still taking a really good hack there. We got Lofton at first, was able to reach on a single to left. Pitcher comes set, checks Lofton over there. Here's the pitch, and here's going to be a changeup down to the dirt. Lofton try to get a dirt ball read, and he looks like he's going to be called out. Nice job by the catcher. Lofton being a Real aggressive there on the base. He's got a good read there. The catch was able to make a, a nice play there. Was able to keep the ball in front. But that's what you kind of teach your base runners there to see the catcher hit his knees. You're moving. So here's the pitch to Greg, and that's going to be ball outside 2-2. Two -two. So we're here sitting here with a, excuse me, it's a three ball, two strike count. Three ball, two strike count with one out to our right fielder. Darwin Gregg, and here's the pitch. There's going to be a ball smoked to the shortstop, right at him. Shortstop's really consistent out there defensively. Pretty good player there for the Truett McConnell Bears, and that's going to be the second out of the inning. And that kind of brings to the plate our shortstop, number one, Dante Morton, who is one for two on the day. Had an RBI single his first at bat, and then four out to deep left field his second at bat. got some juice as well. He can hit one over the field. He's done it a couple of times this year. Here's one of the pitch. And there's going to be a fastball in there for a called strike one. Dante looked like he was a little upset that he took that one. But again, like I said, the pitcher's done a really good job of keeping the Bryan College hitters off balance, mixing in the curveball, sneaking in the fastball. And here's the pitch. Morton, that's going to be a fastball well off the plate. Makes a count. One ball, one strike. Here in the bottom of the fifth with two outs. Lions are up 5-4. Here's a pitch to Morton. It's going to be a slow looping curveball, and it's popped straight up. I think that <coughs> that's going to have out of play right in front of the catcher on the backstop. So that's going to move the count to one ball, two strike. 
Morton just missed that pitch. Pretty good, pretty good cut on it. So now we're at one ball, two strikes to the number four hole hitter in our shortstop, number one, Dante Morton. Again, like I said, he's one for two on the day. And here's a line and a pitch to Morton. It's going to be a curveball. It's going to be chopped up the middle, see if the shortstop can handle the short hop, and he cannot, and it carries right to the second baseman. And let's see how the official score scores that. I'm probably going to give him a hit. Uh, that short hop with Dante's speed, uh, shortstop have trouble making that play there with Morton's speed. And they do give him an official hit there. So that moves Morton to two for three on the day. And that brings up our center fielder, number 29, Daniel Dryding, who is one for two with a double off the goal line sign in his first at bat to drive in a run. Morton with a lead over the first. Pitch checks. Here's the line of the pitch. And that's going to be a big swing and a miss for Dryden there on that fastball. It's a good cut. He was trying to hit that thing into the uh, pond back there as they refer to it as the splash zone here. Score. No balls, one strike count here on our center fielder, Dryden. And there's a pick over the first, and Mark Morton gets back easily. Pitcher looks like he doesn't have. A great pick move there to first, but it's quite good enough to keep the runners from being able to make the move on first move, which is taught. He checks the Morton over at first, checks him again. Morton has to step, and here's the pitch. And it's going to be high and outside. That moves the count to one ball, one strike. Dryden looking for something here to drive. Anything hitting the gaps to get to the fence with Morton's speed, he's going to score with ease. And, of course, anything hitting the splice zone out there, both going to score with these. Pitcher gets signed, checks Morton over that first. Here's a line in the pitch, and there's going to be a ball hammered out in the center field. Center fielder got a good jump on the ball. Nice play out there by the center fielder. Dryden put a really good swing on that ball, hit it really hard. Center fielder was able to get a good jump, make a nice leaping catch to retire the Lions here in the bottom of the fifth where the score is still Lions 5, Truett McConnell 4. And we'll be right back after a 30-second timeout. Here we are in the top of the six. Walker on for his third inning of work as he is facing Jacob Carvalis. Walker looks in and gets a sign. And here's a pitch that's going to be a ball low in there for one ball, no strikes. Again, like I said, I apologize if I have messed up any names because the screen print is really little and my eyes are going bad. But Carvalis is over two, and there's going to be a fastball in there for a call ball two. Looked like a pretty good spot from up here. Guess it must have been a little low. But again, the umpire's been pretty consistent behind the plate today. He hasn't given much on and much off. And now Walker has moved the count to three balls, no strikes. Last thing we need here is a leadoff walk towards the bottom of the lineup. Apparent taking situation here for the hitter, and this is going to be a fastball in there for call. Ball four. That's a four-pitch walk by Walker. And again, like I said, Troop McConnell is really known for their small ball, and this is definitely probably in a bunting situation here. 
as Caleb Gentry comes to the plate. He's 0 for 2 on the day, although he has an RBI. Walker gets the sign, come set, checks the runner at first. Hitter shows bunt. That's going to be in there for a call, strike one. And again, like I said, Stuart McConnell really does a really good job with the small ball here, with the bunting and the, and the stealing and the hit and run. Walker checks the runner at first. Here's the pitch. Runners, looks like the hitter's been given the green light to swing. So now we're at a one ball, one strike count. And then the ground ball here could be a double play. Ooh, Walker with a quick pick to first. Kind of caught me sleeping. I wasn't ready for that. I'd been out if I'd been at first. But the runner is back safely. So we still got a one ball, one strike count. Walker gets a sign. Here's pitch. That's going to be a fastball high and tight. Pretty good test. Stab there by Bradley Prince to be able to keep that ball from getting to the backstop. Like I said, Walker sits around that low low to mid 90s. You can get his fastball up there around 92, 93. He's got a live arm. So now we're at a two ball, one strike count. Here's a pitch from Walker. That's going to be a swing and a foul ball out of play. Brings the count to two balls, two strikes. And then, of course, the pitchers are kind of getting their cardio in today, having to chase the foul balls up and down this hill, up and down this hill. So for any future Brian Collins lines, if you're a pitcher, you're going to be getting your heel work in during games. Here's Walker with the pitch, and that's going to be a swing and a miss, strike three. Nice backhanded stab there from Prince to keep the ball from going to the dugout. Uh, hitter's not allowed to go to first there because the ball's in the dirt, and our first base occupied. He was out now with nobody on there. The runner batter would be allowed to run. So that's going to bring up our first out of the inning. And now coming to the plate is going to be the leadoff hitter, Ethan Roberts, who is – one for two on the day with an RBI. And here's Walker, and that ball does get past Bradley. Tough pitch there to handle as it caroms right off the backstop right to him. Of course, last week during the Union game, Lions caught an unfortunate break as a ball got by the catcher and hit the concrete pad or hit the, hit, hit the concrete wall and bounced right back to the catcher, and he was able to retire a base runner at third. Kind of an unlucky break for the Lions last weekend on that as it was a chance for a big inning. Walker with a sign, comes set, checks the runner at second. Here's the pitch. It's going to be a fastball down in the dirt. Nice stop there by Bradley. So we got a two ball, no strike count here to the leadoff hitter for the Bears. He's one for two on the day. Walker checks. Cahoon creeps in at second. CC creeps in from first. Here's the pitch. That's going to be a fastball high for a 3 0 count. Walker's got a Get back in the groove here. As he's 3 0 to the leadoff guy. He's definitely going to be taken here for a call strike one. And I wouldn't be surprised if he takes here on 3 1. Again, like I said, Truett being a known for kind of their small ball, scrappy ball team. And there's going to be a pitch down and away for called ball four. That's a pretty good pitch from up here. But like I said, the, the umpire behind the plate has been real consistent. Not giving much off the plate, not giving much up in the zone or down in the zone. He's been really consistent with his strike zone today. And he's been consistent on both sides, too. So, regardless, here we are with runners at first and second. In the top of the six with one out with the three hole, number two hole hitter is. Definitely in a bunting situation here. There's Lofton's angle there. It's third. Walk with a spin move there to check to see if anything's up. This is a two hole hitter. Looks like Tanner Griffith, who's up for two. CC, the first baseman's up on the grass. Cahoon's working in and out at second. Lofton angled at third, waiting for a bunt. This could be bunted to him at third, though, therefore, if it's not, he's going to recover back to third. Walker misses out there for ball one. Definitely don't want to load the bases here with Ramsey on deck, who's the leading home run hitter for the Bears. And Walker's going to be behind the count 2-0. Walker, again, still one pitch away from getting out of an inning. The ground balls could be a double play, especially as fast as the field's playing today. Walker checks the runner. Here's the pitch. That's in there for ball three. Wow. It looked really good from here. But, again, he's not giving much up or down or off. So here we are at a 3-0 count to the two-hole hitter. 
definitely going to be taken here in the 3-0 count. And that's going to be a four-pitch walk for Walker, and that's going to load the bases as that's going to bring Coach Mack out of the dugout here. So the runners, the bases loaded and one out here in the top of the six. And we'll stay right here just so I can kind of give you the rundown of what's going to happen. But Walker's come in and thrown the ball really well. Last inning, he cruised through the lower part of the lineup. People often wonder what the coaches, when they get out to the mound, what they say in these situations. Uh, back in my days, when I used to coach, I would walk out there and I always would either uh, get on to my boys, which all three of my boys played for me when I coached high school baseball. So I'd yell at them just because I had a reason to yell at them, I'm sure. Or I was out there telling a joke just to kind of break the tension a little bit. So as we resume play here, Top of the six with the bases loaded, the corners are up. Lofton and Cullen even with the bag, the middle staying back for a ground ball double play. Here's a pitch to Ramsey. That's going to be in the dirt. Nice stop by Bradley Prince there. So a ground ball to Lofton or Cullen. They're definitely going to be coming home to Prince for the double play. Ground ball to Walker. Of course, he'll be moving, going to the plate. Morton Cahoon looking for a ground ball double play to them there in the middle. Here's a pitch by Walker. Here's a swing and a miss on a changeup. Good pitch. One ball, one strike. As Ramsey's last time up, he saw two really good changeups from um, Walker. It just struck him out. And now it looks like he's having some difficulties with his back glove. Which, if I'm not mistaken, I think Ramsey may have been drafted out of high school at Heritage High School in Conyers where his dad was the head coach at the time, Shane Ramsey. Played a couple of years in the minors and I think uh, because of NAI rules you're able to come back and play college baseball. You have to, of course, sit out a year. And there's a, another change up. It's going to be called a ball. That's a pretty good pitch. That's a really good spot there to the lefty. He was able to lay off on a really good pitch. In my opinion, I thought should have been called strike two. But now we're at a 2-1 count. Here's another change up in there. That's going to be called a ball three. Holy smokes. Those pitches look pretty good from here. But, again, the umpire's been pretty consistent, pretty tight back there. So now you get a 3-1 count to good hitter, and here's the pitch. And there's a swing, and that ball's going to be fouled out of play. And that brings the count to three balls and two strikes to the right fielder, Ramsey. Well, walk, Walker's looking for a strikeout right here. A strikeout would be huge to retire Ramsey and for the second out of the inning. Walker's got his sign and come set. And here's a pitch. There's going to be a swing, and that's going to be a base hit into center field. That's going to get down. That's going to play at least one. Here's Dryden with a cutoff throw to Morton, and that's going to play two runs. And, of course, rules of baseball, walks, walks, and walks. Both runs scored or both walks by Walker. And that now is going to bring the score – Bears six, the Lions five. Good piece of hitting there from Ramsey on a like a three-two changeup pitch. He's kind of been fooled on several times. It looks like he was just sitting on it. So with one out, runners at first and second. This brings up the number four hole hitter who's 0 for two, Brody Genter. Walker looks and gets the sign. And here's a pitch, and that's going to be a slider off the plate for ball one. I'll be honest with you, I think maybe some of those calls that were called balls were pretty borderline to be in strike three. But that's the kind of the way it goes. You don't get that borderline call, then you end up having you end up giving up a hit. But it's kind of been that way on both sides of the plate. Walker checks his runners at second, checks again, and here's a pitch. That's gonna be a slider in there for a called ball. Wow. Now we're at a 2-0 count. That's, that's, that's a pretty good pitch. But also, I guess, you would take in the, the cardinal rule, too. If the pitcher's not really around the zone, he's not going to get those borderline calls. And there's a fastball in there for a swing and a foul ball straight back. Right next to some parents here. Makes the count 2-1. Again, I think Walker just needs to continue to uh, attack the zone with fastballs. They uh, 
sure it looks like they're a little better hitting team on all three pitches and they've been late on several fastballs and Walker here with another pitch that's going to be a change up in there for a call strike two really good spot there by Walker so with two balls two strikes and one out here in the top of the six the Bears have played two runs on a single by Ramsey there's going to be a slider looked like it was had to be down because it didn't look like it was out so now that moves the count to a full count. And, of course, the runners I don't think will be in motion here, but I, you can't be surprised with Coach Crowley, who's very aggressive on the bases. So we're at a three-ball, two-strike count here. Walker checks the runners, and that's going to be ball four, low and away. And, again, Walker's just not getting that borderline call. So now we're back to the bases loaded here with one out in the top of the six. Again, I'm sure it's still known for the small ball, so you could always expect maybe a safety squeeze here. And this is Caleb Williams, who is one for one. Here's Walker with the pitch. It's going to be a ground ball to third. Nice play by Lofton to stab it. That's going to go 5 4, but that does plate one run. But a nice play there for our third baseman, Bryson Lofton, with a diving play. And it looks like he kind of hurt himself on that one and uh, really not going to say on air what he hurt. Uh, if you're a baseball player and you've laid out for a hard ground ball at third before or short or second, you kind of know what you could hurt there. But that's a nice job by Lofton to save two runs from scoring there with a diving play and to get the force out at second. Really good play. Walker, first pitch there is low, which Lofton's made some really good plays this year at third. Uh, he actually went viral with a play that you will probably never see again in person on a ball that was uh, thrown to the plate and it trickled away from our catcher. He come from third base, hit a feet first slide in front of the dugout, picked it up with his bare hand, went behind his back and one hopped it to Bradley Prince behind the plate and they were able to record the out there at the plate. And uh, it actually went viral on Twitter, uh, Foul Pole Sports uh, went viral there. And it was just, it's one of those plays in baseball that you you have to watch it over and over to, to see what really happened. So uh, it was uh, one of those that the coaching staff, the Coach Max said he had to go back and watch it 10 times just to, to see what happened because he was still wasn't real sure. But that last pitch was a swing and a miss strike two Walker, so now the runner's going to be off, and that's going to be a ball outside. And runner stop. Of course, what he's trying to do there, stop getting a rundown so the runner at third can score. So now we're at two balls, two strikes, two outs. Runners at second and third. And this is the, I think it's the catcher, Jordan Kentry. Here's Walker's pitch. That's going to be a swing and a miss, strike three. Nice backhand stab there for Prince. And that's going to end the inning. Truett's going to take a 7-5 to five lead there in the top of the six by scoring three runs on one hit. And the Lions are coming up here in the bottom of the six down by two. And, again, this is the nine-inning contest of the doubleheader. The next game will be the seven-inning game. And we're going to take a 30-second timeout and be right back. Bryan College Baseball.
And here we are in the bottom, back to the game, bottom of the six, where we got our second baseman, number five, Cade Cahoon, coming to the plate. Here in the bottom of the six, down lines around 75. And here's the first pitch. That's going to be in there for a ball one. Cahoon looks like I think he's 0 for 2 on the day. Here's the pitch. That's going to be in there taken for ball two. This is a part of the lineup where the Lions need to really work the count, hopefully get into the Bears' bullpen. We're going to have base, need to have good base runners on here. Here's the pitch, 2-1. That's going to be that's going to be called strike one. Wow. Wow. Walker, unfortunately, wasn't able to get that borderline call last inning for him on the mound. And it's going to be a pop-up. Seems like it's going to carry out a play. But the catcher runs over and makes the play. Nice job by the catcher. I thought that ball had a chance to get out of here. And Cahoon is retired with a F2 pop-up to the catcher in foul territory. And coming to the plate is the designated hitter, Devin Ogg who is 0 for 2 on the day with a strikeout. And then Truett with the lefty shift as they move the third baseman out into short right field, which that kind of become a big thing in the major leagues with dead pull hitters. And, of course, it pays off right there because Ogg with a slow roll of the second baseman, Ogg getting down the line, nice job by the second baseman to recover from deep, deep middle and make the play. So that's going to be two outs. And coming to the plate is going to be our eight-hole hitter, number 26, Cade Cahoon, who had a double last at bat, driving in a run. So he is one for two on the day with a double. Pitcher has a sign. Here's the line in the pitch. And that's going to be in there for a called ball one down and in. Like I said, this is game one of the three-game series. Doubleheader will be played tonight. And that's going to be in there for a call strike one. So we're at a one ball, one strike count here on Cade Cook, the left fielder. Again, like I said, was doubled his last at bat. Here's the line in the pitch. It's going to be a fastball. Chop foul off the top of the dugout. Third baseline, so that's going to bring the count to a one ball, two strike count. Cook, who I believe is a transfer from Lee University, has come in and done a really good job for the Lions in the outfield and at the plate. And again, he's got some serious pop with his swing. Catcher sets out about six inches outside, and that's going to be out there for called ball two. So now we're at a two ball, two strike, two count, two outs. Here in the bottom of the six. And here's the line and the pitch, and that's going to be a curveball. Slow, loopy curveball in there. It's going to be down for called ball three. So now we're at a three ball, two strike count on the left fielder, Cook, here. He's looking to reach base to get it back to Bradley Prince, who was able to hit a two run home run his last at bat. And here's the pitch to Cook. That's going to be a swing and a ball chop foul into the dugout. Still keeping the count at a full count. This is Cade Cook, also known as Cookie, by the coaching staff and fellow teammates. Here's 3-2 pitch. It's going to be a foul ball straight back out of play. Still keeping the count 3-2. Good A-B here by Cook, fouling off several pitches, looking for something elevated, something he can drive. And here's the 3-2 pitch to Cook. It's going to be another foul ball off him. Again, that's a dead ball. We're going to be in the batter's box. And we're still at a 3-2 count. We're working on about pitch number nine here in this A-B, which for a lot of the baseball gurus out there, nine and ten pitch at bat is a good A-B. It's a quality A-B. You can run the pitcher's pitch count up. And there's a slow looping breaking ball out there for ball four. So a great at bat there by the left fielder, Cade Cook, also known as Cookie. Again, like I said, it'd have a 9-10 pitch at bat and then draw a walk. It's a really good A-B. So it's a 
So that's going to bring our, our catcher, number 12, Bradley Prince, to the plate, who hit a two-run shot off the left field uh, net last at bat to put the Lions up. So Bradley looking for his second hit of the game. And, of course, Bradley hits lefties pretty well, as we just demonstrated that last at bat. Pitch checks the runner, and here's a curveball that's going to be off the plate for a call, ball one. On deck is going to be our leadoff hitter, number 17, Tyler Cullen which TC led off the game with a solo home run in the first inning on the first pitch of the game for the Lions. Pitcher has his sign, comes set, checks pitch over there at second. Checks it again, and here's a pitch. That's going to be a fastball way out of the zone. And that's going to cause for the Truett McConnell pitching coach to make a trip out of the uh, dugout. And looks like he's signaling to the bullpen. And it looks like the Bears are going to make a pitching change so that's going to end Austin Gurley's day, who went five and two-thirds innings, gave up five earned runs, had three strikeouts and two walks. He threw 106 pitches. So it's a pretty good outing by the lefty. And in comes a big right-handed pitcher. I'll get his number here shortly. But he will inherit a two-ball, no-strike count to our catcher, number 12, Bradley Prince. see the Truett McConnell Bears are decked out in the navy blue and Columbia blue. It's a good looking uniform. I, I'm a big fan of the baby blue. But a uh, really good day there for the pitcher from Truett McConnell, Gurley. Again, had a pretty good day on the mound. He was able to mix it up with, with his breaking ball, keeping the hitters off balance, and then, you know, sneak a fastball inside. So he uh, threw the ball really well. Tip your hat to that young man on a, a good day at the mound. Uh, probably is done for the weekend after breaking the 100-pitch threshold. So on the mound, is looks like I think it's 32. I really can't tell from up here. Big right-hander. Uh, I'd say his velo is probably going to be in the upper 80s to low 90s. He's a big kid. Looks like he's uh, looks like he's about 45 years old, but he's huge. He's an animal. said he was going to inherit a 2-0 count. The pitcher for the Bears is going to be Hank Simmons. Big right-hander. Big kid. And again, Truett's rocking the navy blue uniforms with the baby blue letters and numbers outlined in white. Really good looking uniform. The Lions are rocking their charcoal gray with Lions in gold, outlined in black with red numbers, and a black cap with a with a gold bill. Simmons is here finishing up his warm-up pitches. Again, he'll inherit a 2-0 count to the Lions catcher, Bradley Prince, who uh, hit a two-run home run his last at bat. Cook is at first, who uh, was able to draw a, draw a walk after a really good A-B, fouling off nine or ten pitches here. And Simmons' first move is a pickoff attempt there for uh, Cook there at first. Prince sitting here in a 2-0 count. I think well, Bradley will probably take this first pitch here as he's uh, no, that nope, that fastball center cut, and Bradley's up there hacking. Very, very aggressive approach there by our catcher number 12, Bradley Prince, being aggressive there on the first pitch fastball he sings out of the relief, sees out of the reliever. So that now goes to a two-ball one-strike count. Here's the pitch, Cookie's off, and Bradley with a slaps a single out there. Oh, and Cook is uh. Took off. He kind of hesitated. Oh, tough break there for Cook. Bradley really hammered that ball into center field. Cook, I think, kind of got confused on how many outs there were. And that's going to retire Cook at third. But Bradley with a good swing there. 
Cook kind of kind of hesitated when he rounded second. Should have should have just stayed there at second. But again, it's Cooks. Cooks got pretty good speed there, so you know you can't really fault him from trying to go to first or third. But uh, tough break there for the Lions there in the bottom half of the six as that's uh, going to keep the score seven to five. But Bradley will receive credit for a hit there. That'll be his second one of the day. But uh, baseball, it happens. So it's uh, going to take a 30-second break as Walker gets his warm-up pitches in and Bradley Prince gets his gear on. We'll be right back with Brian College Baseball. And we're back here in the top of the seventh. We're leading off the inning with number 29, Michael Marcello, who is 0 for 2 on the day. And that last one looked like, just from where I, my point of view, that Cook kind of was in a straight steel situation and heard the crack of the bat and didn't really know where the ball was at, kind of hesitated around in second. And, uh, and he was being aggressive on the bases, which we'll, we'll, you know, that's part of the game. Kind of hesitated. So for any of you young guys out there still playing travel ball or rec ball or high school baseball, kind of rule of thumb: if you if you hesitate, you just stay where you're at. But that's uh, that's baseball. It happens. And Walker's still on the mound for the Lions. He's got a one ball, no strike count, and there's going to be a fastball foul straight back. Like I said, Walker runs his fastball up there, 91-92. That's kind of been what's given the Troop McConnell hitters troubles, the the fastball and, of course, his changeup. His changeup's really good. Um, so, and there's going to be a slider down. It's going to move the count to a two-ball, one-strike count, which Walker ran himself into trouble last inning, walking the first two hitters of the inning and, and then giving up a single with the bases loaded. Here's another fastball in there for a swing and miss, strike two. Again, like I said, Walker's fastball's got some life, and uh, I think he just needs to go ahead and keep attacking with the fastball. Like I said, the, the Troop McConnell hitters are a little late with the fastball, and if they are, generate barrel contact. It's uh, soft contact, and there's a hanging changeup that is hit out over the building and left field for a solo home run, bringing the score Truett McConnell, eight, from your Bryan College Lions, five. Walker looks like he just left that pitch up over the middle of the plate. And he sent that one out. Good swing there. So now brings us to Jacob Carvalis, who is also 0 for 2 on the day. Tough break there for Walker. There's a pitch by Walk. Hitter shows bunt, pulls it back. Lofton come in crashing hard. As he hitter takes that pitch for a call, strike one. Walker just hit the pitch. It's gonna be a fastball up in the zone, bringing the count even to one ball, one strike. Pitch, ball two outside. Walker's got to get back in the zone here. Definitely don't want to give up a walk after giving up a solo home run. 
There's a pitch with Walker, and that's going to be a fly ball back here behind the plate. Bradley Prince looks like he's got a beat on it, and it just falls back behind the backstop net. So that's going to bring the count to a two-ball, two-strike count. On Jacob Carvalis. has a sign from the little wristwatch and here's a pitch that's going to be a fastball it's going to be a ground ball out there to Cahoon picks up the short hop flips it over to TC for the first out of the inning nice play there by Cahoon ranging over to his glove side to record the first out of the inning and that's going to bring up Caleb Gentry like I said, the writing on the screen is pretty small. Of course, my eyes aren't the greatest like they used to be, so I have a little trouble reading. Walker here with a pitch. That's going to be another high chopper out there to Cahoon at second. Fields it with ease, and here's Cahoon. Cahoon kind of a little air throw there, but TC, being the athlete he is over there at first, is able to come off the bag and get the runner on the tag, so that's going to be the second out of the inning. Nice job there by TC to uh, be able to recover there, get the tag on the runner, and that's going to bring the leadoff hitter, Ethan Roberts, to the plate, who is one for two with an RBI today. So that's two little weak ground balls out there to second base on Walker's fastball. There's there going to be a first pitch fastball in there for a call strike one. Like I said, Walker's fastball's got life to it. I think if I'm Walker, I'm going to keep attacking with fastball, fastball, fastball until they establish they can't really hit it. Last pitch was going to be a ball high, so that leaves the count at one ball, one strike. Walker has a sign and comes set. Here's a pitch. It's going to be a slider in there for a call. Strike two. Good pitch. And again, when Walker's got his fastball working, that slider it looks even harder to hit because he's got such a live arm. So it's a one ball, two strike count here. Prince set up on the inner half of the plate. And that's going to be a swing. And it's going to be a chopper back up the middle. Good piece of hitting there. Fastball in on his hands, and it's just a nice job by the hitter to be able to get the barrel to it. Get a little C&I single back up the middle. So with two outs here in the top of the seventh, that's going to bring the number two old hitter, Tanner Griffith, to the plate, who is 0 for 2 on the day. Of course, the leadoff guy is always a base-stealing threat there. With pretty good speed, guys, a pretty decent lead there. Walker's got a really good move; he can kind of catch him sleeping. Walker's checking the runner. Here's a pitch. That's going to be a swinging and a little ground ball there in between short and third for the second hit of the inning there. And coming to the plate is going to be the right fielder, number 99, Ramsey, who uh, last at bat singled up the middle to drive in two. Here we are. We've got two outs here in the top of the seventh. Walker's just one pitch away from getting out of it here. Definitely don't need to make a mistake here. See Ramsey, who is the leading home run hitter for the Bears. And here's a pitch. That's going to be a kind of a slider down and away for ball one. Walker looks in and gets the sign. Sets the runner at second. Here's a pitch. And a swing and a miss on a changeup. Good pitch there for Walker. Just kind of had Ramsey's number with that pitch. And so last at bat, Ramsey, I think, was kind of sitting on the changeup and was able to drive it back up the middle for a single. Walker checks the runner at second. And here's a pitch. And that's going to be a changeup. Just a deep fly ball to right field. Darwin's got a beat on it. Wind's definitely blowing that ball in for sure. So the wind is not carrying out to right field today. Last home game, last Saturday, wind was blowing out about 40 miles an hour. And uh, so anything hit in the air last week in right field would have been a home run. But today the ball's just not carrying. As, uh, there's a little, little wind, warm temps, beautiful day for baseball. But we're going to take a 30-second timeout here from Bryan College Baseball. We'll be right back with the top bottom of the seventh.
we are back in the bottom of the seventh. Lions are at the top of their order with our first baseman, number 17, Tyler Cullen, coming to the plate, who is one for three on the day. Hit a solo home run his last uh, first at bat of the game, first pitch fastball he was attacking. So let's see what TC does here on the first pitch from the big righty. That ball's going to be smoked out in the left field for a leadoff single there by Cullen. Nice job there, Cullen. First pitch fastball aggressive. Jumping on the first pitch in the zone. And that's going to bring the third baseman, number 44, Bryson Lofton, to the plate, who is two for three on the day with two singles to the left side. Of course, he's let off the inning, so the Truett McConnell Bears have kind of put on a, a shift, and Bryson has been able to beat it twice. There's a first pitch change up in there for a call, strike one. Good take there for Lofton. He has uh, really kind of gotten away from chasing that first pitch changeup. And there's an aired throw there by the pitcher. Cullen's going to move up to second. He's going to make a hard turn. He's headed to third. Here's a throw from the right fielder. Not in time, and the third baseman's able to knock it down to keep TC there at third. So now we got nobody out with a runner at third here for Lofton. We got a no ball, one strike count here on Lofton with the runner in score position. Lofton looking to drive in his 31st run on the year. Pitcher comes set. Here's a mine and a pitch, and it's going to be a change up off the plate. It's going to be a one ball, one strike count here to Lofton, who's looking to do some damage here with one swing. As the wind dies down now. Ball one strike count here on Lofton. Here's the pitch. It's going to be another change up off the plate. It's two balls, one strike. Look like True McConnell's being really careful here with Lofton, who last year led the Lions with 20 home runs and was a second team All American selection and is a preseason All American selection this year. And here's a fastball in there. Good cut there from Lofton as he sends it straight back. 2 2 count here. Lofton can drive in a run here with a ground ball just about anywhere on the infield as Truett's concede to take the out. And here's a pitch. That's going to be outside for ball three. And a full count here with the Lions number two old hitter, Bryson Lofton again, who's tied with a team lead in eight home runs. He's looking to drive in a run here for the full count. Pitcher comes set, checks TC there over there at third, and here's a pitch, and there's going to be ball four. It's way off the plate there as Lofton reaches with a walk, and that brings number 11, Darwin Gregg, to the plate with nobody out here, which for the Lions, this is what you want. You've got your first two hitters on. TC reached via single, then Lofton reached there on a, on a walk, which brings up right fielder Darwin Gregg. Which again, one swing, Greg could put this thing in the building and tie this ball game up. Here's the pitch to Greg, and that's going to be a slider down and away. It looks like they're going to be even more careful with dry Greg as they were with Lofton. Not going to give him probably much off the plate, over the plate here to hit. Because again, you stack these two guys with power back to back. You kind of got to pick your poison here. But also at the same time, you got. Dante Morton over there on deck, who's able, capable of hitting it over the building as well. But that swing and a miss brings a count to a one ball, one strike count here on Greg. Like I said, Greg's got power to all parts of the field. Lofton getting a short lead over there at first. There's a throw over. Lofton's back easily, which he is definitely not a base stealing threat. Uh, as we know, he has zero stolen bases on the year. He is not a base stealing threat, so we don't have to worry about him really stealing. And there's going to be a change up high. That's a two ball, one strike count. Darwin sitting in a plus count, could get, some, could get something over the plate here. 
But again, Truett being really, really careful with these last two hitters because they know in one swing this ball game can change real quick. But you can't be real, real careful not throwing to Greg because you got Morton right behind him who can also do some damage. Here's a pitch. There's a chopper foul. Greg's looking to – he's not up there wanting to walk. Greg's wanting to put a good swing on the ball, which you can't blame him. Dolan's one of the better hitters on the team. Comes in batting well over 300 with eight home runs. Here we are at a two-ball, two-strike count on Greg. Here's a pitch. That ball's hammered into the left center gap. That ball's going to get down. And Lofton's on the move. He's going to round second. He's going to come into third. There's going to be the throw, and he's going to be hammered out at third. Nice throw by the left fielder. Coach Matt was bringing Bryson all the way. That's going to be a stand-up double for Greg. But good piece of hitting there for Greg. Uh, nice play out there by the center fielder. Uh, coming up, making a good throw. That's the second one he's cut down at third. Of course, Lofton was moving on contact as he saw that ball was down, but the center fielder made a really good throw. And that's going to bring a coach out of the bullpen or out of the dugout as he makes a call to the bullpen. And again, can't really take a, a batter off here because, again, Morton can do a lot of damage in one swing, just like Dryden and Lofton and Greg. So, here we are in the bottom of the seventh. We've got an eight-six ball game. Dryden, or excuse me, Greg is at second, and they're bringing in another bullpen arm. We're going to take a thirty-second break. We'll be right back with Bryan College baseball. And on the pitch for the trip, Bears is going to be the big righty Samuel Crow. I don't have any numbers to kind of give you his line on what he's got going on. Uh, Rollins has entered the game. Alex Rollins, number 39, has entered the game for number 11, Darwin Gregg, as probably a pinch runner and defensive purposes here. And now we have our number four hole hitter, Dante Morton, our shortstop. And here's a pitch. Gonna be a swing and a slow roller to the third baseman. Third baseman comes in, gets it, throws a strike over to first base. And Morton's obviously upset with himself on that swing. But again, coming in being first pitch aggressive, you can't really fault him for that. And that brings to the plate our center fielder number 29, Daniel Dryden. Here in the bottom of the seventh in the eight-six ball game. Dryden's very capable of tying this ball game up in one swing. 
Rollins gets his lead, and here's a ball down in the zone. That move the count to a one ball, no strike. As Lofton, for the first out of the game, was cut down at third by a nice throw by the center fielder. Then Dante Morgan grounds out, and Dryden pops it straight up to the catcher. The catcher's got a beat on it, and that's going to re end the inning there on a pop up to the catcher. So after seven completes, you got the Truett McConnell's up eight to six here as we head into the top half of the eighth inning. And we're going to take a 30 second break. Be right back with the eighth inning. And we're back live here from Bryan College. We're in the top of the eighth inning, and Walker's still on the mound for the Lions. Walker's got himself in a little bit of a trouble, but was able to work out of it in several innings. And leading off for the Bears is going to be looks like Brody Gentry. I can't really tell because he got the right so small. So here's the first pitch from Walker. It's going to be ball down and out for ball one. Brody Gentry, Genter, again for the Bears. Sorry if I mispronounce anything. Here's a pitch from Walker. It's going to be fastball down. Go to a 2 0 count. Walker looks in, gets the sign, comes set. Here's a 2 0 pitch. That's going to be inside for ball three. 3 0 here to the leadoff hitter of the inning for the Bears. Walk. Eek, eek. Lead off guy reaches by a walk. And that's going to bring to the plate Caleb Williams. But it looks like Coach Crowley's out of the dugout to enter a pinch runner uh, here for the Bears. And I really can't tell what number that is. So an apparent, definitely an Nobody on or nobody out after a leadoff walk. So coming to the plate, looks like it's going to be a a pinch hitter. It's going to be number five. And out of the Bryan College dugout comes Coach Mack. He's got that long, slow stroll out to the pitcher's mound. Looks like he's probably going to make a pitching change since it's his second visit out there with Walker. Is going to make a pitching change, but nice job by David Walker, who goes four innings, uh, four runs. They were all earned with six Ks and six walks, and he threw a total of 90 pitches. So a pretty good day there for Walker. Like I said, he got himself in a jam, but was able to work out of it with just giving up a couple of runs. And the Lions are going to make a pitching change here in the top of the eighth. I'll be right back with the – Pitch and change, and who we have on the mound for the Lions. We're going to take a 30-second timeout.
on the pitch for the Lions is going to be, looks like number 48, Luke Townsend, who inherits top of the eighth here with a runner at first, which will be David Walker's base runner. Luke gets the sign and comes set. And here's a square round bunt. Lofton comes crashing in. That's pulled back, taken for a ball. Kind of the cardinal rule here in baseball is if uh, they're going to give you an out, you kind of let them go ahead and get the bunt down and you take the out. Of course, now if it's bunting hard back to the sec uh, pitcher, third baseman, Lofton's going to be able to going to be able to get that run out. So there's a nice job there by the hitter to be able to get the bunt down the first baseline where Tyler Cullen come in crashing and was able to flip it to Luke Townsend there for the out at first. So nice job all the way around on both sides with the hitter getting the bunt down and Luke and Tyler working together there. The old referred to as the PFPs, kind of the fundamentals of baseball that just doesn't go taught a whole lot to the younger generation now with pitchers filling their positions, you know, Ground ball to the right side, pitchers always got to be breaking over. And there's the first pitch to Jordy Kentry, who's 0 for 2. And it looked like a pretty good pitch from where I'm at, but the umpire called it a ball. So we're at one ball, no strike here with a runner at second. Townsend checks the runner. Here's the pitch. And there's going to be a fastball in there for a called strike one. See, even the count to a one ball, one strike count. Townsend's thrown the ball really well for the Lions. He's come in in several relief appearances, and he's just one of those pitchers that just comes in and attacks the zone. Uh, now he, There's a ground ball to Loft, and he looks the runner back at second, and a nice little sidearm flip over there to TC. To TC, I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't watched this kid play first, man, he is really good over there. He's so good with his footwork, the way he's able to move around the bag, keep both feet around the bag, and uh, just a really – Again, it kind of goes back to just an athlete playing first base. So, nice job there for TC. Nice play there for Lofton to take the chopper away to record the second out of the inning. Here's the pitch from Townsend. That's going to be inside for a called ball. Looked pretty good from here. But going back to Townsend with the pitch, and Townsend's kind of – he's one of those pitchers. He just comes in and attacks the zone. Uh, you know, of course, being that guy that comes in and attacks, he does – he is going to give up a lot of hits. Uh Speaking of that right there, that ball's going to be hammered off the fence for a just a long single there for the hitter, and that's going to play to run for the Stuart McConnell Bears, bringing the score to 9-6. to six. But, again, with Luke, he's just, uh, he attacks the zone, and that's uh, as a pitcher, that's his job. And, again, he, he's going to give up some hits, but he is also going to record a lot of outs as well. And, again, like I said, he's just uh, he's kind of got a three-quarter delivery motion that uh, kind of gives righties fits. So here we are with two outs with a runner at first, score nine to six here. And that's going to be a ball outside. Nice job by Bradley being able to stab at that pitch and keep it in the box there to keep the runner from moving up. And again, you can hear the wind picking up, which is a nice little breeze on the day. And there's another ball hammered down the left field line, and it falls foul. Just a what we refer to is just a long, loud strike. Of course, again, like I said, Townsend comes in and he attacks. And, you know, he's uh, he's done that for the last two years here at Bryan. He does a really good job with it. So now we're at a one ball, one strike count here with a runner at first with two outs in the top of the eighth. And again, you can hear the wind really picking up. Again, blowing straight in from the outfield. Here's a pitch. That's going to be a curveball in there for a call ball one. Thought maybe it broke right across the plate, caught the inside corner. So we're at two balls, one strike. And here's another slow curveball in there. I tell you what, this umpire has been really, 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 really tight with his own today. He hasn't given much off and he hasn't given much up and much down, which is, again, he's done that for both sides. So Truett's being really, really, really patient at the plate. And there's a 3-1 pitch in there for a call strike two. So that's going to move the count to a full count. Base runner, of course, will be in motion with three balls, two strikes, and two outs. The infielders will hold their position and go across the infield with it. And there's going to be a swing and a miss. Strike three. That's going to end the inning there. So Townsend comes in and gives up one hit. Uh, the one run that scored was not his. That was going to be credited to Walker. 
So after eight and a half, Truett McConnell Bears nine, the Bryan College Lions six. We're going to take a 30-second timeout before we go back to the bottom of the eighth inning. We're back here at the bottom of the eighth inning. We're due up for the Lions is Cahoon, Odd, and Cook. I think it's six, seven, eight. Cahoon's the second baseman here leading off the inning. He is 0 for 3 on the day with the strikeout, but he's due for a hit here, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to be outside for ball one. Lions kind of got to just put some run, puts a couple of hits together here, and they get right back in the ball game, and they flip their lineup and get it back to the top of the lineup. So we're at a one ball, no strike count for the big righty here. That's going to be a slider in there for a call. It's strike one. It's a really good pitch there. One ball, one strike here. Again, Cahoon's probably had a pretty good season so far. He's hit the ball really well for the Lions. He's kind of hit a midseason funk, and there's going to be a high chopper after the shortstop. He's going to get behind the ball, and he's going to make a strong throw over. And he, the umpire is going to pump Cahoon on that one. Well, I thought that was bang, bang. I thought Cade may have got down the line a little bit faster than the umpire had seen. But a nice play out there regardless by the shortstop with the backhand ranging into the hole there to make a strong throw across the first to retire Cahoon for the first out of the inning. I thought, I thought he beat it. The Lions just really can't get a call to go their way, both on the mound and offensively. So that brings to the plate. The designated hitter, number four, Devin Ogg, who's 0 for 1 on the day. And here's a pitch to Ogg, and that's going to be a fastball called ball one. And again, you can see Truett that go to the lefty shift. Well, they've done it all day long with the lefties being on, nobody on. They've done this with Ogg and, of course, with Lofton. Put the third baseman out there in shallow right field. And there it looks like a changeup in there for a called strike one. So that evens the count to one ball, one strike here. On the Lions designated hitter number four, Devin Ogg. The catcher sets up inside, and here's going to be the pitch. And that's going to be a slider off the plate. Makes it a 2-1 count here. Ogg's looking to do some damage here in one swing. This pitch will come set. Here's the pitch. That's going to be a fastball off the plate. That leaves the count to a 3-1 count. Now, if I'm Ogg, I'm kind of sitting here. I'm looking for something center cut, maybe middle away to go opposite field here to to get on base, so here's the pitch. And Ogg's going to hit a slow chopper to the second baseman who's going to range over underhand flip to the first baseman. And that's going to retire Ogg on a 4-3 put out. And that brings to the plate our eight-hole hitter, number 26, Cade Cook, who is one for two with a double and an RBI and a walk. Comes set, and here's the pitch. Fastball off the plate. Catcher misses it. Ball one. It's one of those kind of those unwritten rules there as an umpire. If the may have been a strike if the catcher catches it, but if the catcher misses it, it's it's not going to be recorded as a strike. And there's a sweeping slider in there for one ball, one strike. Pretty good pitch there from Samuel Crow, who's come in in his second inning of work. Here's the pitch. And Cook sends a charge into that ball. Yep, that is off the net. There left field, and Cook with a solo home run. Nice job by Cook, who kind of set on the slider there, and that's what he got. And, he, boys, he didn't miss it. It's uh, kind of my thing I like to say. That ball was smoked. 
And Cook there with a solo home run to bring the score nine to seven. Nice job, Cookie. And of course, now that brings our our catcher, number 12, Bradley Prince, to the plate, who is two for three on the day with a two-run home run back in the sixth, I believe. And he had a single his last at bat, and Cook was gunned down at third trying to stretch it on a hit and run. So here's a pitch. That's going to be a slider in there for a called strike one. Good take there for Bradley. First pitch, off speed pitch. You're not going to really want to swing there. Pitcher gets the sign and comes set, and here's the pitch. To and Bradley with a little check swing dribbler to the first baseman, and that's going to end the inning. But the Lions were able to get one back here in the bottom of the eighth. And that's going to bring the score. Truett McConnell Bears 9, Bryan College Lions 7. We're going to take a 30-second timeout. We'll be back with the ninth inning. We're back here in the top of the ninth inning. Leading off for the Truett McConnell Bears is going to be Caleb Gentry, who is looking for his first hit of the game. He is 0 for 4. Here's the first pitch from Townsend. It's going to be in there for a fastball called strike one. Here's the pitch. It's going to be a slow roller foul. Looks like Lawson's going to let it go foul, pick it up. So that's going to bring the count to no balls, two strikes. Lofton's favorite plays with that little slow roller down the third baseline. He was able to come in moving athletic on that slow roller. He had a nice play a couple of weeks ago where a guy hit a slow roller, kind of took a funky spin on him, and he was able to reach down and barehand it and throw the guy out at first. And then last week, same thing, a little slow roller from a lefty. And there's a ground ball to Morton. Like he, his cleats are slipping, slipped out from under him there on the throw. He kind of bobbled the ground ball, was able to recover, but looks like he kind of just bounced up and his foot didn't come out from under him on a throw. So that's going to be going to be ruled an error. And a good pitch there for Townsend. But last week, there was a little cue shot from a lefty off the end of the bat and kind of redirected him. Bryson had to redirect it, make a nice dab and grab. So there's a hitter showing bunt. That's going to be in there for a call strike one. And Loft is crashing hard there at third. TC's kind of staying back unless it's bunted straight to him. And Townsend's got to be the athlete from pitcher's mound to first. So we've got a no balls, one strike count here on the leadoff hitter for the Bears. There's another bunt. He shows it and pulls back. 
as you see, he looks like he's trying to bunt it towards that first base area there to where TC's got to come off and make the play and Towns has got to get over there and cover first. Got a one ball, one strike count here. Towns have been set. Definitely a bunting situation. Runners going. There's going to be a hitting run there. That's kind of what they're known for. Cook's going to come up and fire it out there at third. Rollins, I'm sorry, that's Rollins. Throw's not going to be in time. It's a pretty good throw there by Rollins. But again, this is what Truett's known for is their small ball. They get the guy on there, they'll bunt, and they'll hit and run, and it's kind of their MO for the season. So they're, And that's one thing they're, they do a really good job with. Coach Crowley does a good job with those guys getting them coached up on that end. And Cahoon was moving over to cover the bag and went to recover and almost was able to make the play. So now we got runners at the corners here with nobody out. Number two hole hitter comes up. That's going to be a fastball in there for a call strike one. Good pitch there for Townsend. The Lions are looking here to cut this run off at the plate. Townsend comes set. Here's the pitch. And that's going to be a towering fly ball out to left field. That may have enough to get out. Cook catches the ball on the warning track. Runner at third tags up and moves to the plate, across the plate. That's going to be the tenth run there for the Trip McConnell Bears on a sacrifice fly there from the number two hole hitter. That's going to bring the score to Bears 10, Lions 7. And that's going to bring to the plate the right fielder, number 99, Caden Ramsey, who has one hit on the day. And there's a swing and a miss. Looks like that caught the umpire. And Bradley's going to baseball etiquette, walk out there to the pitcher. Coach Crowley's going to call his hitter down and kind of give the umpire a chance to gather his wits about him, and that's just kind of one of, again, that's one of those unwritten rules of baseball. Umpire gets hit, catcher goes out, talks to the pitcher, coach calls the hitter down, kind of gives the umpire a minute. Good thing is that the, neither team is charged with an official meeting there, because I think uh, by college rules, you're only allowed to have one offensive conference per inning before you have to make a substitution, same way with Pitching, I think you get two visits, and after the second one, you have to make a pitching change. So, uh, nice move there on both parts. Prince and Coach Crowley there, and we're back to no ball, one strike here on Ramsey. Here's the pitch. It's going to be in there for called ball one. Prince set up inside. Well, like the ball kind of ran back across the middle of the plate, but the umpire's going to say, no, he missed the spot. So, we're at two ball, one ball, one strike. Here's the pitch. That's going to be a hard ground ball hit foul down the right field line. And that moves the count to one ball, two strikes. Nice job there by Townsend to be able to attack that inner half and make it uncomfortable for Ramsey here. So one ball, two strikes here on Ramsey. Townsend gets signed. Here's the pitch. Runner takes off. Bradley comes up. There's a throw down, and it's not in time. And Morton's able to save Runner from moving up to third. Not a bad little throw there for Bradley. Good jump by the base runner there. It's actually a really good pitch. It's still on the fastball up and away. So now we're at a two ball, two strike count here with one out in the top of the ninth. Luke has a sign of come set. Here's pitch. And that's going to be inside. Says it hit him. Ramsey said it hit umpire. like, no, sir, it didn't. No, sir, it didn't. By rule, the rule is the hitter has to make an attempt to get out of the way. Now, I don't know how much that's really enforced. But Ramsey looked like he didn't really make an attempt. Maybe the reason why the umpire said, no, sir, it didn't hit you, so you're staying here. So we're at 3-2, and there's going to be a swing and a miss, and that's going to hit Ramsey. And by rule, that is a live ball. That is a live ball, a swing and a miss that hits the batter. And, and again, this is one thing you'll probably never see again in baseball. If a swing and a miss on strike three hits the hitter, is not a dead ball. It is considered a strikeout, and of course he is able to run, but it looks like the ball kind of caught Ramsey on the inner thigh. So he is recorded with a strikeout. Of course, it carried him just perfect for Townsend to run out there and pick it up and throw him out at first. Again, that's one of those one of those plays you'll never see happen a whole lot in baseball is a swing and a miss that hits the batter. So now we got two outs. Nice job by Townsend there to record the Bears leading home run hitter. And here's number four hole hitter, 
Luke gets in, gets a sign, and here's the pitch, and that's going to be a fastball in there for a call strike one. Nice job, Luke, getting ahead in the count right there. Like I said, Townsend just attacks the plate, uh, throws strikes. You know, kind of the, the, the lesser of the evil, and that was because he attacks the zone. He does get hit, but, again, it's like I've always told younger pitchers, if you if they're hitting the ball, that means you're throwing strikes, and that's all you can ask for. So he's come in now. He's got a one-ball, one-strike count. Shakes off print there on that call. Looks in, comes set. Here's pitch. That's going to be a fastball. It's going to be fouled off out of play down the right, hit, right field line up on that big old hill as it's going to trickle back down. So, again, for the pitchers that have a future at Bryan College, you want to be that guy that has that ball that comes all the way back down the hill. So now, one ball, two strikes. Townsend with another pitch fouled off up here in the trees and still going to keep the count at one ball, two strikes. Got us a good little battle going here between Townsend and Ginter. Townsend taking a long look in the Prince behind the plate, has the sign, checks the runner, he bounces out, runner taking off. And he's going to be there with no throw. As Lofton's playing back to the bigger, kind of more bigger hitter, bigger guy at the plate. He don't want to be right there eating up the grass. So now we're at a two ball, two strike count here. Townsend has the sign that comes in. Here's a pitch. And that's going to be called a ball. Jeez. Yeah, I agree with the uh, the scoreboard operators down on that when they put their hands in the air because that looked pretty good from here. I think it was so good it even surprised the umpire. So here we go. So now we got a swing and a miss, and that's going to be a line drive out to Cook, and that's going to be the third out of the inning. And that was that pitch right there, right there should have been called strike three in my opinion. But, again, the umpire's been pretty tight all game long. He hasn't given much off the plate. So at the end of the nine and a half, we move to the bottom half of the ninth inning where the Lions are at the top of the order with T.C. Lofton and Greg coming up down by three with a chance to get some runs on the board here and come back to win this ball game. We're going to take a 30-second timeout. We'll be right back. We're back here in the bottom of the ninth inning where the Lions are at the top of their lineup with number 17, the first baseman, Tyler Cullen, come to the plate, who is two for four on the day with a solo home run and a single and an RBI. Lions are looking to stack some hits back to back to back here to get runners in scoring position. And that first pitch is in there for ball one. And you can hear the wind picking up quite a bit. It's kind of been windy on and off on all day. So here's going to be a fastball in there for ball two. 2-0 two and to the leadoff hitter, number 17, Tyler Cullen. And again, like I said, he is two for four on the day. And here's two on pitch. It's going to be a sweeping slider in there for a call, ball three. And again, like I said, the umpire's been pretty tight with the zone today. That, that pitch looked like a pretty good pitch, but he, again, he's called it a ball all day long, so now we're at a 3-0 count. TC's definitely taken here, and that's going to be a fastball in there for a call. Strike one, moving the count to 3-1. TC looking here to get something over the plate that he can drive, reach base, get it to the next guy. Here's a 3-1 pitch, and that's going to be ball four in the dirt. So now that's going to bring the third baseman, number 44, Bryson Lofton, to the plate two for three on the day with two singles. He walked his last at bat. And 
going to see the Bears, how the Bears attack him here. Lofton's got a team lead in home runs with eight. And on deck is the guy he's tied with, number 11, Donald Gray. So here's Bryson Lofton up to play with TC on first. He just reads via a walk. And that's a kickoff throw to first. Of course, TC's got a small lead because his run means nothing. And here's the first pitch to Lofton. There's the pitch. That's going to be a fastball in there for a call, strike one. I think Lofton was probably looking a little off speed there. Here's the pitch. That's going to be a change up down and away. That evens the count to one ball, one strike here to the third baseman, number 44, Bryson Lofton, who in one swing can make this a one run ball game. Here's the pitch. And that ball is hammered to center field. That ball is going, going, going. Get in. It's off the center field wall. Lofton's rounding first. Cullen's going to check up at third. Good swing there by the third baseman, number 44. Bryson Lofton records a stand-up double there for the Lions. And if the wind's not blowing in 20 miles an hour, that ball is easily gone. But a good swing there by the preseason All-American, 44, Bryson Lofton. That is now his third hit of the game. And that's going to bring our right fielder, number 11, Darrell Gregg, to the plate. And, of course, the Tripp McConnell Bears are going to call timeout. Pitcher's going to, coach is going to go out to the pitcher and say, what in the world are you doing throwing a fastball center cut to that guy? And that's probably what he's doing. Uh, 100% the coach is going, what are you doing? You are trying to let him hit a two-run home run. And, of course, he got every bit of that ball. And, of course, you can hear the wind blowing in. And Lofton records, I think that's his 10th double on the season. And that's going to move runners to second and third here with number 11, Darwin Gregg, who one swing ties this ball game up. But we don't really need a one swing tie ball game up. We need a base hit here that can uh, score a run. And it looks like the Lions are going to – no, they're going to leave him out there. Normally late in the ball game, Brian will enter a base runner for Lofton. Uh, to run, but I think they usually use Alex Rawlins, but they're going to leave Lofton out there at second. So here we are. we got no balls, no strikes, nobody out. Runners at second and third with Dalton Gregg at the plate. And, of course, they're going to be really, really, really careful with this guy as well. So there's the first pitch slider for called strike one. That's a good take there by Darwin. And here's pitch. That's going to be a fastball in there for a call strike two. I think Darwin's kind of sitting on an off-speed pitch there on that count. Now he's got two on him. All he needs is a ground ball here that's going to play to run. And here's a wind and a pitch. That's going to be a fastball off the plate. It's a good spot by the pitcher, but again, the, cat, the umpire has not called that pitch all day long. He is not giving anything off the plate. It goes back to the old rule of the plate is 17 inches wide, and if it's 17 and a half, he has called it a ball every time. So now here we are to one ball, two strike count here on Greg, and here's a wind and a pitch, and that's going to be a slider off the plate. Two, two, good take there with Darwin. And again, 17 inch plate. If it's not across 17 inch plate, it is not a strike. So here we are with Darwin with a two ball, two strike count here. Here's a wind and a pitch, and that's going to be a slider down to the dirt. Catcher's got to block it up and throw Darwin out at first, and that's going to be the first out of the inning. And Darwin's retired with a strikeout on a slider in the dirt. Good pitch there. And that brings our shortstop, number one, Dante Morton, to the plate. And Dante has got a single on the day with an RBI. Big here right here by Morton. It's going to change the whole complex of this game, or outlook of this game. we got runners at second and third. Pitcher gets a sign and comes set, and here's a pitch. That's going to be a fastball in there for a call, strike one. Kind of looks like the Brian Collins hitters are making the pitcher kind of throw a strike to work the count, but they're forcing the taking the bat out of the hands with the first pitch fastball. So here's the next 0 1 pitch to Morton. That's going to be foul ball straight back. That brings the count to 0 and 2. And of course, Morton's a pretty good two strike hitter, too, as well. He's able to uh, he's able to put the ball in play, he's even able to hit a double home run single. So Morton, again, with two strikes, is just as good with two strikes as he is with no strikes. And here's the pitch. That's going to be a slider. That ball's going to be hit up the middle. Shortstop's going to bobble it. And there's the break the Lions need right there. Morton reaches on a ground ball error by the shortstop. 
And like shortstop's been pretty clean for Truett today, but when it come down to the pressure situation, that ball was booted. So that's going to be an error on the shortstop. But again, you can't really fault him. Play field's been playing fast all day. It's probably a little more choppier than it has been with all the traffic around the bases and the footsteps and some big prints. But Borden is going to reach on an error, and that's going to play TC. And Lofton moves up to third on the ground ball. And in enters, looks like number 16, Logan Stradley, to uh, to run for Dante. Of course, Dante's kind of been battling a hamstring issue all year long. So there comes our center fielder, senior Daniel Dryde, fifth-year guy here, looking to do some damage. The ball gets by the catcher, and uh, Stradley's going to move up to scoring position. That's a pretty good read there by Lofton. That ball sometimes will, will kick right back to the catcher, and if Lofton's breaking hard to get there on that pass ball, he's going to get called no man's land, and you definitely don't want to be the second out of the inning there on a ball that kind of got away from the catcher but kind of called a break back, back to him, but it did stick against the backstop. But Stradley moves up into scoring position, and now the Truett McConnell Bears have elected to intentionally walk Dryden, which was kind of expected because Dryden could end the ball game in one swing, but what they don't know is our second baseman, number five, Kate Cahoon, has been known has come up with some clutch hits for us this year. And Kate is a single away from tying this ball game up, but also can end it in one swing with a grand slam here. But right now, all the Lions really need is just a a one out single to plate two to tie this ball game up and get Dryden into scoring position. So here's the first pitch to Coop, pitch to Cahoon, pitcher comes set, and here's the pitch. And that's gonna be a slider in there, ball one. Nice take there. But, again, like I said, the ball's off the plate. Pitch, the umpire has not caught it all day long. So we're at one ball, no strike. Bases loaded here in the bottom of the ninth here for the Lions. Here's a pitch. That's going to be in there for a ball of two. Cahoon's up in the count. Two balls, no strikes. Got to be real patient here if you're Cade. If you're looking for something elevated, something up, you can just absolutely drive to tie this ball game up. Here's a pitch. from, And there's going to be a ball. It's hammered down the baseline, third baseline. That's going to plate Lofton. And that's going to play Stradley. Dryden's round at second. He's going to check up at third. And big hit, Kate Cahoon. Kate Cahoon, ladies and gentlemen, has come up huge all year long in big situations. And do not ever give up on that fifth-year senior right there. That is a huge at bat, huge swing right there by Kate Cahoon with a two-run double tying this ball game up 10-10. to -10. Holy cow. I told you, you better not count him out. He may have been, he was looking for his first hit of the day, and there it was. And that is the biggest hit of the day for the Lions. And that's going to tie this ball game up here with three runs in the bottom of the ninth for the Lions. And now that's going to bring the designated hitter, Devin Ogg, to the plate. You were the runners at second and third with one out, and all he has to do is get something in the outfield, and this ball game's over with. Or Dryden can get a good dirt ball read here to win this ball game. So here we are, ladies and gentlemen. We're in the bottom of the ninth. We're in a tie ball game here with one out. Tie, the winning runs at third. Pitcher comes set, and here's a pitch to Og, and that's going to be a fastball out. Og's got to be real patient right here. He's got to be real, real patient. Anything out of the zone here, he's taking. Because even a slow roller on the infield is going to play, is not going to play to run as the infield is up. The outfield's pretty shallow. But a deep fly ball here is going to win the ball game. And there's going to be a swing and a ball chop foul. Brings the count to one ball, one strike. August just got to settle in right here. Slow the heart rate down, deep breath, get locked in here. It's Dryden at third, ready to win this ball game here. Any way we can, pass ball, ground ball, fly ball. And Augs trying to end it right there on that swing. That's a good swing right there. So now you've got two strikes. All Augs got to do really here is just put this ball in play, put pressure on the defense, a high chopper. Slow roller, punching Judy, anything right here wins this ball game. Here's a pitch, and that's going to be fouled straight back to the screen. Good cut there from Og, who's looks like he's pulling off the ball a little bit. Got to think a little more here, middle back side on this approach right here because a single wins the ball game, and Og's going to be the hero of the day outside of Cade Cahoon, who just had a huge two-run double, two double here. Pitcher comes set, deep breath, and here's a pitch to Og, and that's going to be a swing and a miss for strike three. And that's going to breed Cade Cook to the plate, which Cook, his last at bat, hit a solo home run to win the uh, to get the Lions within two in the bottom of the eighth. 
And then Truett scored one in the top of the ninth, and now we've got a tie ball game. We're runners of second and third here. We need Cook to get a huge hit right here. So we got no no uh, two no balls, no strikes, two outs here on Cook. And here's the pitch, and that's going to be a fastball up in the zone. And on deck, Bradley Prince, who's been in this situation many a times, he can come over the bases loaded and in it in one swing. As you can tell, of course, this moment in time, if you're a young guy, young kid out there playing baseball, this is where you've got to understand a, you know, as a hitter, probably not going to get many off-speed pitches just for the simple fact you don't take a chance the ball getting away from the catcher. So as a hitter, you, you're looking for something up. So one ball, one strike count, and there's Cook's got to know. He's got to know right there that but that's you can't swing. You got to be looking for something up in the zone there. But hey, it is what it is. He's got to step out, reset. We're at one ball, two strike count here. Lions have got to push that last run right there with Dryden, who was able to go from first and third on Cahoon's double. And there's a good take there by Cahoon or Cook. So that's going to even count to two balls, two strikes. Pitcher gets a sign, and here's Cook. Here's wide in the pitch, and there's going to be a fast. Uh, it looks like a slider down and away. So now we're at a full count, okay? And as a as a hitter, you've got to get locked in here because he's not going to walk walk the hitter here to have that lefty on righty matchup. And here's a pitch, ball four. Good take by Cook there, and that's going to load the bases here for our fifth year senior catcher, number twelve, Bradley Prince. Who is uh who is uh two for four on the day with a two run home run and a single up the middle. And Bradley can be the hero right here, fifth year senior who has been in big spots many a times here for the Bryan College Lions with the go ahead run, the game winning runs at third base. So all Bradley's gotta do is just slap a single right here and this ball game's over with if Cahoon's out at second. That's going to be a fastball out, so we're at one ball, no strike count. Any way the Lions can win it right here, pass ball, walk in, walk, punch and Judy, grand slam, either way is fine as long as we get that last run across right there at third base. One ball, no strike count. Fastball in there for a call, strike one. So we're at one ball, one strike here. Pretty good take there for, for Bradley. We're at a one ball, two strike count here on Prince, who's two for four on the day with a home run and a single. Here's a pitch. That ball's going to swing and foul ball out of play. Pretty good cut right there by Bradley. So here we are. We're still at a one ball. We're at one ball, two strike count, winning run at third base. Need a, need a ball in the dirt here or anything to get driving across the plate here to win the ball game. And here's a pitch. And Bradley Prince just hammers a ball out there to right center, and that ball is gone. Walk-off grand slam by Bradley Prince to end the ball game. And what sucks for him on that is he's only going to get credit for one run. But you know what? I'm keeping the stats. I'm giving my man fifth-year sealer Bradley Prince with a walk-off grand slam to win it for the Lions there in the bottom of the ninth as they score seven runs to win the ball game. Really, it's 11-10. But I'm going to say 14 to 10. Big swing there by number 12, Bradley Prince. Huge, huge, huge inning there for the Lions. It's Kate Cahoon with a big double there to drive in two to tie the ball game up. And then, of course, Bradley Prince, walk off, grand slam over the scoreboard, probably landed about halfway to Chattanooga. Holy cow, what a ball game. Tip your hat to the Bryan College Lions for battling back there. Uh, scoring seven there in the bottom of the ninth. Technically, they're only going to get credit for one. But uh, they win game one of the series, 11 to 10. And that's going to bring up our next game, which I would say is probably going to be at about 30 minutes from now, probably around a 5 o'clock start, I would say. Uh, and that'll be a seven-inning game. Coaches meet down the first baseline to shake hands, say good game to one another. And it was. It was a good ball game by both teams. Uh, so we're going to – Take about a 30-minute break, maybe find another PA guy because uh, all the comments look like they don't want me to do it no more. So <laughs> there's the Drydens, and everybody gives me a look. So uh, end game one, 
Final score says 14 to 10. Uh, Bradley Prince are probably going to get the T-shirt of the game as you got to give it to him with the walk-off grand slam. And we'll be back at thir for about 30, I guess in 30 minutes for a 5 o'clock start, and we'll see everyone then.